Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 24th episode of the Friday Nightmares podcast. I am one half of your hosting team this evening, Mr. Smoke Show Crawford, coming to you from Swartz Creek, Michigan. And with me, as always, is my lovely host, Heather Powell, coming to you from Waterdown, Ontario, Canada. And 24 episodes. I can't believe it that 2020 is is reaching to its final days. <laughs> like yeah. it's been it's been a year. <laughs> to say the least, it's been one of the, probably one of the more memorable ones in many years. Right. I feel like well, we lived through a historical event, and we are still living through a historical event. Um, you know, I think if we look at 2020 and we look at everything from obviously COVID 19 to the Black Lives Matter movement to your pro- outgoing president um, to the election that caused him to be the outgoing president to this is a historical year. This is a year yeah. that will be studied. Um, by business students, by health students, by poli sci majors. Um, I think everyone will be looking back in this year. And now I've realized how much, un- how, how it is not fun to live through a historical event. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, we've At lived. All. <laughs> our generation has lived through a couple historical events already. But this is the biggest one. You know, yeah. I think besides this, maybe September 11th was pretty big for both of our countries. You and I were at an age where we were old enough to kind of understand what happened but really not get the impact of what had happened yeah. but this is our borders have never been closed this long our right. borders now they're they are open for transportation for trucking goods and if someone has any essential reason to travel like family members or whatever um and you can fly into the states for business so when i say closed you know there is people going back and forth but if i just want to go visit scott I, I technically could. I couldn't drive. I'd have to fly to like Chicago and drive up. Right. Um, I would have to quarantine when I came home for 14 days. And I don't, does Michigan or Chicago have a quarantine? Uh, I don't think they do. No. Okay. So, you know, it's, it's, it's very different, you know, unless of course you're an essential traveler. If you're essential and you need to go back and forth between the two, like a trucker or whatever, you don't need to quarantine. But that's historical. We've never seen that. It's going to come up to a year probably that our borders will be closed like that. I know this is freaking crazy because like like I I think we've mentioned it on the show before, but like when you came and visited in February, we joked about like, all right, well, I guess we'll uh, see each other like when the lockdown's done or blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Little did we ever know it would be this long. No, never, never in a million years. And and the arguments of people wearing masks, not wearing masks, whether COVID's real, not real. Whether the um, vaccine's going to be uh, the issue that it is or not. Oh, my God. You know, if I never hear the words, so this is what I never want to hear again. Um, stay safe. I never want someone to tell that to me again. Um, I know that sounds horrible. I want someone to just tell me to be reckless. Be <laughs> fucking reckless, Heather. Um, I don't want to hear wear a mask because I feel like you should just know to do that. Yeah. Um, I don't want to hear new normal. Fuck, I do not want to hear new normal ever again. Ever right. again. I, I don't blame you. All the, These are terms that we've been hearing all almost all year round now. And I feel from my work, it's been really bad. So my, my director will say pivot. And I love my director. First of all, my director is like the bomb. But she'll always say pivot because that's what the university says. And I fucking hate that term because pivot, I remember, so I used to play basketball. Like nothing like like not serious basketball, just like house league and stuff. And pivot is something that you do in basketball. And every time I hear pivot, I feel like I have to do a drill again. <laughs> and I just, oh, fuck, man. Like, I'm just, I'm so done. But I, I, there's a lot of blessings. My mom beat cancer this year. Yes, she did. Um, my, my dog had his surgery that I w- got postponed and he is doing better. There's been some awesome 2020 films. I've guessed so have you on, a, on bil- awesome podcasts. And we've had great experiences doing that. Made new friends um you and i have gone in closer we did go to a horror convention all the way back in february right that was that was fun yeah that was cocky by that car remember when the car went by and the sludge and shit oh Uh, my god yeah all that salty slush smacking me right in the face (laughs) that was it was funny Uh, not at the time now now it was funny funny at the time too okay (laughs) good i'm glad you you and i were both laughing about it as we were walking to the car (laughs) i had some awesome campfires with friends I, i when i could do stuff i did stuff you know, like as much as this year was a challenge for me, I actually grew a lot this year. And um, yeah, what about you, Scotty? What are you thinking? Yeah, I mean, it's pretty much been the same. Like uh, 
you know, I haven't been able to get out and do a whole heck of a lot like you have. Like you, you lived it up when you could. When I lived, when I could, I went fucking hard. That yes, you true. did. <laughs> <laughs> but I, you know, uh, I am just uh, very thankful because this is also the year that we started the show. Yep. Uh, and once again, you know, our friendship has just gotten that much closer to each other. Like originally, yep. this show was going to be a once a month podcast, and we said because of COVID, screw it. What else do we got to do? Let's start recording biweekly, and now it's just part of the show yep and like yeah we've made some great friends through the podcasting community like i've actually would call them real close friends now yeah i agree and uh you know i've gotten to go out and do a few things i got to take my first uh uh, traveling experience out to chicago by myself that was a lot of fun you went to up and you went to some random cabin uh long turn ish you were just kind (laughs) of trying to act out one of the movies you're trying to act Um, out one of my sick fantasies you know (laughs) and you know you also um you did that haunted light thing that you went to and you had a lot of fun on halloween with your friend kim um with the car and the pumpkins and all that stuff that you did and what was something else that you did that i remember was thinking really cool um, well, I know my buddy uh, Zach came into town, who I hadn't seen in yeah. over ten years. So that was well, really you hung nice. out with Adam, and you got yeah, completely shit faced, and we had our alcohol battles that night in yeah. September. <laughs> yeah, that was a lot of fun. Yeah, so they, like you know, we've made you and I have definitely made the best of what we can of this year. Like, you know, kudos to everybody else. Like, this is a tough year, so if you've like if you have made it here, that that is like a big achievement for anything right now absolutely for sure and like we've realized how desirable smoke show is like the ladies keep (laughs) calling so let me tell you we just need to keep getting that listenership up with uh with scott's ladies coming in um and this has been a year for horror you know i'm so glad i'm seeing people turn their their or change their tune from oh 2020 was the worst year ever because it was not the worst year ever yeah they just never got to the movie that we did pardon me they just never got to see a lot of the movies that we had already watched. Like a lot of these people are like cramming them in at the end of this month. And you know, it's true. We're like porno, <laughs> please. That was so June. <laughs> that was so, that was so last year. Well, it's funny. I was on another show. I was on the Rosin round table. Shouts out to Martinator, Taminator and, uh, and Vin, Reverend Vin. And uh, they brought up Kindred and they're like, no one's talking about this. I'm like, Scott and I talked about that back in the summer. Heck, there was a mic couple- drop. <laughs> <laughs> Hell, there was a couple movies where you were like, "Hey, we talked about that on the show." <laughs> right? Like, I refuse to be told nobody's talking about it when Scott and I fucking talked about it. Right? Um, <laughs> no, and that's fine. People don't always have to listen to our show. It's okay. I don't. No, we've got, the we've worst got part is it gives it away, right? If you haven't listened, if I call you out and I'm like, "We talked about," it, they're like, "Oh." <laughs> right? Yeah, but it's just fun to give Mark Nato crap. <laughs> It is. We love Mark Nato. Um, and Mark Nato is the reason why I have done in total 230 2020 watches. Yes. And that, that is the same thing. Like uh, between our first time challenge uh, or first time watches challenge that we gave to ourselves. And then also just because listening to the Rotten Round Table and just being inspired by Mark Nato, just watch a ton. I am at. Just to 200... give me your 2020 first, just the 2020s. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Okay. I am at 233 2020 films. 233. So Scotty watched three more than me. So that means Scotty wins the challenge. Congratulations, Scott, for watching <laughs> They Reach three times with different endings and counting them each time. That's right. And Castle Freak five times. <laughs> Castle Freak five times, just in case it changed. <laughs> um, so for first time watches, so not 2020s for me, I watched now just horror. If we include non horror, um, that would be higher. Yeah. But if we look at just horror movies, I finished watching Wrong Turn 2 yesterday. So I think we'll just call the competition today. I'm sure Scott and I will watch other movies leading up to New Year's Eve, but yeah. we don't need to worry about that. 252 movies that are non 2020. So together, if I look at horror films alone, so just horror films. I watched 482 first-time watches. Now, if I include other movies, such as what we do on It's Not Horror Okay, and movies watched from other genres, I have watched over 510 movies. That's awesome. For first-time watches. If I include It's Not Horror and some other genres that I watched for the first time this year. Right. 
And I was at, because I just finished one today called Let Us Pray mm-hmm. that I added to the list. And okay, scroll down here. Oh, wait, I didn't include my horror home films. Never mind. I'm more like 515. Oh, nice. Very nice. Yeah. yeah that's I forgot awesome. about those. Yeah. For me, uh, first time watches that were not 2020 and they were just the horror films mm-hmm. uh, was 261. Very nice. Very nice. So with a total of 494. So I, by June 1st, my goal is to hit 500 first time watches. Like next year? Uh, no, by by time New Year's hits uh, next Friday. Okay. I want to have, I want to watch these six other movies to hit my 500. Awesome. Awesome. I don't think I will be as ambitious as you. Um, I really don't think I'm going to watch, uh, <laughs> uh, what would we, I need to watch your 18 movies. Between <laughs> yeah, that's a lot. And Year's Eve. Um, maybe, you know, mm, no, probably not going to happen. Um, <laughs> see, that's what happens when you drink more than Scott does and you go out and you party and do all this other shit. You don't have time right. to watch. This movies. is what happens when you have a life. <laughs> Well, I will say this. Congratulations, Scott. You have won the challenge. Oh, thank um, you. And yeah, I guess I'll continue to podcast with you. But, Yay. <laughs> but what a year. You know, I don't know how you feel, but I have learned so much more about film this year. Yes. And like, sorry, go ahead. For me, I wouldn't say I learned. I would say like I learned some things about film this year, but it would be more like I have learned to grow in a really big appreciation for certain genres that I used to hate. So what was your biggest change out of this year? I know I'm kind of asking you on the fly, but. Um, my biggest takeaway would be like that found footage is actually good. Yeah. I would agree with you on that one too. Cause that one was like the biggest shocker for me for this year was just like finding all these found footage films that I never thought I would like. Yeah, it's been, you know, that was a real humbling experience. My my opinion changing so much on the original Blair Witch Project. Um, the creature features and international films for me. You know, I yeah. was not somebody who saw a lot of international films. And now I feel like I really have a better appreciation for foreign films. They actually tend to be my go-to now uh, because I think they're better to be quite honest. Yeah. Um, occasionally there is a, a domestic film and we'll get into that when we get into our awards, um, that stands out, but there's a lot of really good Spanish, French, South Korean films out there. And this year really taught me a lot about the different filming styles. I learned even more about, like I've watched a couple of movies from the 70s and 80s and I in the 90s, early 90s, and then the 2000s. And I'm really noticing a difference on how each type is filmed, even how the, the plots for each movies are written, which ones are slower, how they're, how they're made. And I think next year, what I'm going to do is continue with first time watches because this will be easy for me because I'm going to be going back to the 20s, 30s, 40s 50s 60s 70s you were doing really trying to increase my knowledge of of older cinema yeah because you're doing kind of the same thing i'm going to do um i don't know how far back i will go but i know like one thing i am going to focus on is going to be some of the hammer films Mm. because i i like the few that i've seen and disliked a few that i've seen so i'm kind of like a mixed bag with them so i'm kind of want to go through a lot more of their catalog and then kind of visit some silent films and just I'm going to probably be all over the place, but yeah, I'm continuing the first time watches because this has just been a fun experience and there's just so many more films that I need to see. Um, Yeah, I hear you. One thing also that I have learned to appreciate, and I think this was mainly from uh, doing a lot of the 2020 watches with you, is uh, coming to love and respect and see like really good low budget films and see how they were done. Do you hear that, Sander? Friday Nightmare likes low budget. Xander. We've been, yeah, we've been petitioning it since the beginning, Mister Xander. Xander, I agree <laughs> with you, Scott. And you know, I think I have a a much higher appreciation for how difficult it is to make a good movie. Yeah, you know, I think a lot of times, and we use the term armchair quarterback in you know watching football or whatever, but I think it responds to movies too. Um, you know, cry, congratulations to Alex Edward. I know Alex has released a movie on YouTube. Uh, it's yes. Friday Thirteenth Nine Lives, right? That's the full uh, title. I think it was yeah, Friday the Thirteenth Part Nine. Nine Lives. 
Nine li- yeah, it might be nine lives. I think it's nine lives. I haven't had a chance to watch it yet. I will, but that's an example of someone. Obviously, you know, <laughs> Alex isn't like a baller that we know of. Um, so it's a low budget film, and I think it takes a lot of guts to put stuff out there because you're going to get criticism. Um, yeah. When we watched the Horror Hound Festival, we saw some really great shorts that were done well, and we're done. And <laughs> we we're talking to I think it was Brandon about this from Exploding Heads and. Sometimes shorts is the way to go in a film festival because you can put your money into a 15 minute film and a film festival, right? You're trying to get picked up. You're trying to get noticed. I'm not talking about people that just put films up on YouTube. You know, you do you and do what you got to do or on prime or whatever. But I think that's an interesting concept that I learned this year is really taking your money and using it wisely. And that helped with doing the volume of watches that we did because we were able to establish that. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, I mean, especially in the very beginning when there wasn't a lot of like choices to make to watch 2020 films, we pretty much watched whatever came out yeah. and there were some rough ones in there, but at the same time, there were some that I was like, okay, they did this right. And then when I watched a really bad one, I'm going, oh, I see where they screwed up here. Absolutely. Where they missed the mark. You know, I remember when we watched the marshes when it came out, that was beginning of January. And I remember being like, fuck man, like, shit like and people were like oh man this film's really good i'm like oh man like (laughs) it gets better but you did have to dig i think if you just sat there and and watched theatrical or what would have been theatrical releases or only watched shutter though shutter fucking killed it this year yeah yes Um, they did and you know what fucking so did netflix as well like netflix fucking killed it as well but like you have to you have to really kind of branch out and sometimes you know there's a lot of movies um that i will acknowledge that were very well well done that are on a lot of people's top 10 uh they were not my favorite movies of the year yep, but i agreed. very much respect them and admire them there's just other films i watch that i personally liked more right so and, and so is biff agrees apparently i know and then we have the pussies we you know we'd like to thank scott's cats for being here throughout these 24 yeah. episodes as well too they have supported um, me throughout the year Kept well me and when we did our, our two episodes in person um then they were all over the table too i'm not sure <laughs> yeah. if you recall right i think we actually had alcohol during that first episode i think we each had a drink Yep, and I think I I think I had a drink on the second episode too because I had like a whiskey sour, but I didn't like drink too much. I just drank to calm my nerves because if everybody could tell, like Heather and I have talked about it, I was a nervous wreck. Oh man, for those first couple of episodes because I was not used to being like a main host that everyone's going to be hearing the voice of. Like you know, you and I split the split it equally, so we're both like just the main focal points of the show. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Where before I just kind of interjected here and there with two other people. So this was a more uh, nerve-wracking task for me at first. and then, Now you're all like, I fucking run this bitch. <laughs> it's like, I edit this mofo. I put this shit going on. Heather puts it together. We got this shit down pat. <laughs> we got this fool. Um, <laughs> well, for those of you who are uh, listeners to our show, thank you for being here for the ride. If you're listening for the first time, welcome. What we are doing this year is we are doing awards. Scott and I have come up with some playful names for some awards. Also, just some very basic bitch awards. <laughs> and a surprise at the end. Uh, yes. So make sure you listen to us all the way till the end, because <laughs> Dave C, you will be very pleasantly surprised. So yes. Oh, uh, and before we get into that though, mm-hmm. the listeners have probably already heard it once, and we'll probably be hearing it on this episode. But we got ourselves a new theme song. Would you like to mention? That's about right. That? You know, I was going to say it at the end, so we oh, could okay. like. <laughs> We will get into that. We do have a theme song. We will be saving it to the end simply because there's someone that I want to shout out. And just due to the nature of our show, I would prefer if I gave this individual um, some timestamps. So yeah, <laughs> understandable. Identify it. But if you have noticed, we do have a new theme song and there'll be more to come. There's so much to get through the awards to listen to. We have so many surprises, Scott. We are just... <laughs> full of surprises for 2020 this is our christmas and new year's gift to you all well you know we're just going the theme of 2020 you fucking never know what's gonna happen will there be toilet paper will there not be toilet paper will Will godzilla be (laughs) will godzilla be walking through your town destroying the city who knows will donald trump be president will he not be president will he leave the white house will he not leave the white house (laughs) will he burn the white house down before he leaves 
Who knows? Will you guys get your checks? Who knows? Right? <laughs> we have no idea what's going on. Um, so, you know, we just like to keep it spicy and we'll continue. So we do have a number of awards. Um, I guess we'll just kind of start off with each award um, and then say, now we did have the option to give a second place. So if we did feel that one category, we had something that deserved a, um, an honorable mention, we could give it um, as an option. So should I go first? Should I just name the award and off we go? Uh, yeah, I'll say, cause uh, yeah, we'll, you name the award and then you give yours and I give mine, we can go back and forth. So welcome to the 2020 Friday Nightmares Award, Horror Award Awards for, I don't know, best films or best, um, what we felt was the best of the year. So we'll start off with Best Bloodbath. So this award is to nominate or just to reflect which movie really showed the best goriest action, um, really connected with, with each of us. So Scott, why don't you go first? All right. Well, and I was going to preface this by saying that Heather and I have not shared each other's list. To oh, each yeah. Other, so. I have no idea what he chose and he has no idea what I chose. Yeah. So this is just going to be kind of fun for all of us. So this one, I mean, I kind of brought it up to you a long time ago like when we first, well, when you first came up with the idea for the award ceremony. But for my best bloodbath pick, of course, I had to go with Ghost Killers versus Bloody Mary. Oh, good one. Good one. That one is just blood guts feces <laughs> bodily fluids it's just it's it's pretty much throughout like 80 percent of the film it's like the walls are coated in gore people are slipping on blood it it is by far probably the bloodiest movie i had seen this year when it like obviously not taken seriously in complete comical style but way over the top bloody as hell and yeah that that, that was one of the reasons why i chose this one because it just stuck with me yeah, you really, you know, I, I saw that movie as well. And definitely there was, it was a bloodbath. I totally get why you gave uh, Ghost Killers versus Bloody Mary. This is where I finally saw it. It took me a long time from when you yeah. saw it to when I saw it. It was at least six months. Yeah, because there was just no way for you to get a copy of it. Yeah, it was very, very difficult. Did you have a second place or was that just your overall? No, that one was like, as soon as uh, that award came up, I'm like, I already know what it is. You already knew. Awesome. Um, so mine is Possessor. And it Ooh. was the opening scene in Possessor. Um, so we should preface, there may be some spoilers here that we give of some movies. Yes. So um, if you hear the movie, you know, we may talk about a scene or something from that film. So, you know, I'll, we'll do our best to say spoiler, but a lot of these are all 2020 films. So if you know, if you've been listening to us and you've seen what we watched, those are what we're going to be talking about. Um, so the opening scene in Processor started it off for me. And because it was so realistic, I felt like the blood in this movie was just a very good reflection of what possibly could happen when someone bleeds out when major arteries are, are cut. Um, yeah, I can totally see why you picked that. And I do have a second place. Uh, my second place goes to Aqua Splash for... <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> For the water slide scene, uh, for those of you who have not seen Aqua Flash, I recommend there's a water slide scene that will definitely define a bloodbath, in my yeah. opinion. Anyways. Yeah, that scene, like if there was going to be a runner up for me, that scene would be it. Because, yeah, that was, you're seeing body parts go, coming down the slide after that. Oh, yeah. It just, it was all over the place. It was great. And, you know, like, it's such a shitty movie. <laughs> <laughs> like it's a horrible movie but that scene is where they threw all their fucking money into yeah that's what made me go you know what this is a all right movie after that <laughs> right like it kind of somewhat saved it so 
The next award is most tearjerker. So this is what got us in the feels, made us maybe tear up a little bit. Um, and this is going to be interesting. I have no fucking idea what Scott chose for this. So I'm really excited to see. So Scott, what was most tearjerker for you this year? All right. So this film made me freaking almost ball like a damn baby. And it is thanks to Heather that I even watched it. And that is Immortal. What? Wow. Yeah, that, I did not. I didn't think that was going to be your choice. That is crazy. Yeah. That scene with Tony Todd and his wife, just, I was damn near bawling my eyes out. Just like watching that scene. Cause it felt so realistic. Now, Immortal, for those that don't know, is an anthology that has come out this year. It is probably one of the least talked about anthologies that have come out this year. Yes. Um, and it's very real. So I'm, wow. Do you have a second place or? Nope, I don't, uh, there won't be some second, it'll be a little while before I get to some second place. Okay. But yeah, uh, that one was like the one that I just like, yep, that one just hit me in the feels. I was just bawling my eyes out during that scene and just. Like, because I, I could pretty much just feel what Tony Todd went through. Well, and, and to give a, li a little synopsis, uh, his wife has cancer and yeah. they're making a very difficult decision. And it's so well acted. Like, it's that's it. That's an anthology where you're like, am I just watching real life events happen? It's so yeah. it's so accurate. Right. Like it's and the reason why I'm talking like that is because it's my second place. Oh, nice. <laughs> um, so it also pulled from the feels from me as well, but not as much as this film. Um, this film is available on VOD. Not many people have talked about it at all. I think Scott and I are two of the few people that have watched it besides Mark Nato, and it is called The Tent. And oh, yeah. The I... Tent... I was wondering if that one would pop up on yeah. an award for you. Yeah, and The Tent um, is a story about a, a gentleman who has Alzheimer's. And yet again, we're talking about spoilers here. Um, he has Alzheimer's and his daughter's journey with it. And it starts off with something that you think you get, and it's something completely else. Um, yeah. It's a great twist, actually, to be honest with you. Um, it's a low-budget film. Very, very well done. Fucking pulled from my feels like crazy. So I had to acknowledge that movie. Yeah, that is, yeah, that, that is impressive because I, I almost picked that one for like a couple of different categories because of just how well it was. It's a well done film, you know, and I don't think a lot of people have seen it, unfortunately, but maybe not everyone would dig it either. You really do have to kind of like a lot of character development, a lot of slow burn. Some people would probably question, is it horror or not? Um, right. But definitely it pulled from the feels this year for sure. It definitely did. Right. So next is feel good movie. So this was just a movie that you either felt, I don't want to say happy afterwards, <laughs> you know, happy after horror movies, but at least you felt like it had a good ending or you really got behind the characters and you were happy that someone was successful, um, whatever the case may be. So Scotty, tell me what you picked. All right. So this one you knew because I was talking to you about it. Like, you don't know what it is, but talking to you about, I was struggling with this one for a minute because everything like, was so dark this year <laughs> yeah i was just like nothing made me feel good i don't know what to go for here and then i started thinking about it a little more and there is one movie that especially by the end i felt just it felt like a feel-good movie to me and that is after midnight oh uh, yes it, that did have a good feel good ending actually yeah because like the crap that you see the couple go through like throughout the movie and then at the very end, they're back together and you see the husband or boyfriend is willing to change his ways. And because of that, he ends up having to defeat the depression, loneliness monster that's been haunting him throughout this entire movie. And yeah. he ends up defeating that, which kind of just goes to show that yep, he pretty much has learned his lesson. He's going to be a changed man. Absolutely. Gosh, that's um, I'm so glad After Midnight came up for you as a feel good movie. I really am. I know yet you had some struggles with that movie when you first saw it, not because you didn't like it, just because it was right. very hitting home for you. Um, but you know, we saw that movie, what, back in February? Yeah, I think February 14th is when it came out. So we watched it right. that weekend. So you know, it's 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 almost a year later. Yeah. Um, so that's and, and how much you've grown in that time, you know, we're two years past your divorce and other things like that. So that's yeah. really fitting. That's really, really cool, my friend. Uh, mine is probably going to be a surprise. I don't think you're going to know what it was that I would choose this one, but uh, 122. Really? And the reason why I chose 122 is because uh, the main character is deaf. And her and her fiance are already in a situation where they're not supposed to be together. 
if you read i don't know if you remember the yep. story that much and they managed to outsmart this fucked up hospital staff and they survive and i just felt like it was actually a really nice love story and i felt really good at the end of it it's an arabic film it's on netflix it's a slasher um for a long time it was up as one of my top movies of 2020 uh, and I still strongly recommend it. I think it's yes. a really good watch on Netflix, but I remember just feeling really like behind that couple. Yeah. Like I was behind both of them. I wanted them to make it out. I wanted them to be together more than I felt for yummy. I remember that couple in yummy. I was like, fuck, I don't give a shit what happens to you guys. You're fucking assholes. Like I didn't right. care. And I feel like yummy and 122, even though different premise, but they're both in a hospital. So I think that's where I like pull I that from. That and i i really got behind this this couple and the shit they go through and how it's filmed and like that's again with international filming this this is an arabic film and the way that they focus in on the on the uh, antagonists at times and then back to the two protagonists and what happens to them great movie great feel good film for for 2020 so yeah, yeah i would not have uh guessed that one for your pick that yeah it's kind of fitting that we're both picking ones that deal with like couples with a happy ending at the end well right and let's see we do believe in love i believe in a thing called love just listen to the of my heart all right right where it hurts best kill all right scotty well this one kind of came as a shocker to me um because this is a very recent watch and the uh the pretty much the best kill that I've seen this entire year had to come from the ending of Hunter Hunter. Fuck. <laughs> All right. So spoilers, because I know this movie is fairly And just new. to to interrupt Scott, it was my number one too. Is it so really? I'm gonna let yeah so yeah so I'm gonna nice. let you talk about it because you're gonna do a much better job. All right. So yeah spoilers because this movie I think just came out this month. But the ending of this film you see the antagonist get what's fucking coming to him in the most horrific, damn near, should I say, I spit on your grave remake style kill. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. this dude's messing with a, a family of trappers. And well, she treats him like a dead animal that is hung up and rips his flesh completely. The problem is he wasn't off. dead. <laughs> yes, I'll say yes. He was still alive. Yeah. As his yeah. flesh was getting peeled off. And literally the man was flayed alive. And yeah. there's only been like a few movies where I've seen like really realistic flaying. And a lot of that was actually done in Game of Thrones. Mm-hmm. And when I seen it in that, I'm like fuck just twitching and just like getting shivers and everything Give me how... yeah. and seeing it like in a movie like this too where it was just no holds barred i'm going fuck because you you remember my reaction when we were oh, watching yeah the scene. <laughs> yeah man it was it and you and you took the words right out of my mouth like i was leading up to hunter hunter i was like ah, oh, you know nothing really overly stood out like there was some cool shit like the water slide scene from aqua slash was really cool um there were some cool kills in processor there was some cool stuff in vfw like there was some cool shit that happened and then this happened and i was like son of a bitch i'm in and this (laughs) was definitely you know talk about leaving 2020 with we all feel like we've been filleted i kind of feel like we could all represent (laughs) that was 2020 we all want what's all what we want to do to 2020 is fucking fillet it um excellent movie check it out if you haven't done it um obviously you probably have if you're listening to this but it is it is fucking sick it yeah. it's a really good film yeah very very good all right yeah so i'm sorry i'll keep going i don't know why i stopped maybe because i'm thinking of the kill um <laughs> so someone you can get behind hero so two can be named here so each of us could name two um and we didn't genderize it we we left it up to us to decide if we wanted to choose two females two males or whatever um so i'll let scotty go first all right should i say because i picked two yeah give so- the two Give okay, the two and then I'll get my two. And you won, okay. No, no, go ahead. All right, so the first one I picked, because this is one of those where I'm like, all right, so I had to really think about it because I'm like, what characters really stood out to me that I could root for and like whatnot? So I was thinking about it, and well, the very first one is one that affected both of us pretty early on in our 2020 watches, and that is uh, Scott from Livescreen. Okay, that was also my... Pit, one it? of my picks too. 
yes <laughs> that's awesome yes. yeah yeah just because of everything that man had gone through and you're mm-hmm. just rooting for him the whole fucking movie to just finish this game to get to the end and to just completely like just win the day and the camera's on him the entire time there was no break for this actor um yeah. he basically performed a movie on zoom by himself and it, it, it wasn't zoom it was like i guess it was trying to be like what is it twitch twitch, twitch. Yep. um yeah i his acting ability and the way he sold this film i don't know anyone could watch this and not be behind him and not want yeah. him to be successful and not want him to not get out of the situation that he's in like he was just somebody that you could believe in so i'm glad we both chose him as one of our heroes so let's hear who your second one is all right this one is uh kind of just more of a like as i'm watching i'm just going yes get it get it like i was just rooting for the character and that is becky from becky yes oh my god (laughs) what a good call absolutely i was like yes she is a freaking sociopath that's probably gonna like just not be normal after this but man was i fucking rooting for her throughout this whole movie just like you kick their fucking asses yeah i can't agree more yeah she was great some of those things like the pencil crayon stabbing and the yeah. fucking stabbing him in the eye and fucking shit like that yeah that was a sick film yeah she was definitely someone even though she was kind of like fucked up you still were like you wanted her to win you wanted her to be successful yeah because i think she even kind of changed uh your opinion on her at first because i think remember when we first watched oh her, i thought were, she was a super brat yeah, yeah i can handle her yeah and then i by the end of it, i was like yeah girl fuck this shit up. <laughs> yeah it's true i did i did i did come a full what is it is that a 180 uh yep like uh 180. 360. 360 or yeah 180 180 because yeah, you're 180 right because 360 you just come back to the same place <laughs> yeah so, exactly <laughs> uh 180 on her uh, my second place or not my second not second place but second um pick protagonist hero was the guys from vfw fred oh nice Walter, doug and abe i thought they were fucking jokes <laughs> like, yes like i just loved how they took no shit they were just like fucking bring it bitch we're fucking veterans and i really love who is the director I, joe Don, not joe Don. uh uh joe bezos no not joe bezos what the fuck uh, 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 I'm looking it up right now. Hold on. Because I, oh my God, I can't remember. Also did Bliss. Yep. And I feel like Blitz in this has the same flavor in terms of filming. Yeah, let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Either way, I'll just talk about how much I love. So I loved all of them. I really had a soft spot for Fred since he was kind of like the main leader, the main protagonist throughout this entire thing. And I just loved it. Like, there was just no fucking hold bars. And it was awesome and it was a great way to start off this year and it has stayed with me still um to where to where we are isn't it joe bagos Bagos? Uh, yep joe bagos so i was kind of close when i was saying (laughs) jeff bezos (laughs) well we were close but yeah excellent excellent fucking protagonist love them yeah because just the chemistry between all of them you could tell like the way they worked as a like as a group you could tell that they like just were best friends like that had been at this bar telling stories and just like being yeah. together and you felt so so emotional when something bad happened to one of them absolutely right it, it got it, it it did get you in the fields and you wanted them to be successful yeah. so of course if we have someone that you can get behind we also have to have someone who you can hate or fear and much like our heroes two could be named here and we don't have to have them gender specific so scotty who did you name all right so this one was a bit tough for me so like there wasn't really like i had to look up the name because i was like i know they brought it up once and it was hard to tell them like to remember it but my first one is Eamon, the demon from the cleansing hour oh fuck yeah that's a great one scotty yeah because i was just like fuck that was just like the most hardcore villain that just and funny yes he was funny he was cruel he brought out all the tension between all the characters and then just the ending where he just did exactly what he wanted to do which was just complete cause complete utter chaos yeah and just in such a violent despicable way like yeah he was such a good villain and the woman that played played as her being possessed by him did freaking fantastic fuck that was yeah you know what great choice what's your what's your second ah my second one is young sook from the call excellent yeah, wow this, i love it 
because that was one of those where I'm just like rooting for her, rooting for her, like, oh, this, I hope she gets out of this bad situation yeah. with her mother. And then all of a sudden she just snaps. And, and you're like, oh, chick be fucking crazy. Yeah. yeah and the yeah. shit she goes through after that, like the shit she like starts putting the other character through throughout the movie. It's like, oh, fuck. <laughs> like she just went straight up bonkers villain bonkers yeah i would agree that's the best way to describe it that's awesome so my two are different um so the first one is jenny from extracurricular oh nice i hated that bitch and i use the word bitch because i hated that character this young woman the actress that played her phenomenal job to pull that kind of dislike from me um to despise her and at the end, be so upset of the situation that Jenny is in and mad. I was mad when the movie finished. I was mad. And that pulls true emotion and really makes you despise somebody. So props off to Jenny from Extracurricular. If you have not seen Extracurricular, I strongly recommend it. And I believe it's available on Prime still. So and that is it. a great I'm, choice. Yeah. Fuck what a good movie that is. Um, and something else from this year that's probably not going to make a lot of lists, but I thought this actor did a phenomenal job, is Fritz Hans from The Golden Glove. Oh, very good choice. was a vicious, horrible man. The way he disrespected women in this film, um, the way he treated people, the way he would kill them. I felt like I was watching a hidden camera of somebody's fucking dirty ass apartment. And this dude just owned this role of a crazy fucking serial killer. And yeah. um, I will say you feel like you need a shower after watching this movie. <laughs> yes, yes. He's you like did. you had a golden shower <laughs> watching this movie. I <laughs> get it, Scott. Get it. Oh, um, but it's called a, it's a weekend Club. for me. Don't, 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 don't get the weekend for me um yeah the golden glove on shutter i think a lot of people will um not appreciate it because it's not uh it's not gonna grace anybody's list i seriously doubt it but fritz the gentleman that played fritz Hahn, his honks his performance is just fucking legendary and really made me fucking hate and fear him i would not yeah. want to run into him anywhere in in life so yeah because yes that is an amazing choice. Like, I actually want to switch mine now to that because that, <laughs> that is so good. Oh, like, I've I scrolled past that movie multiple times, like, on my list, and it didn't even click with me. I'm like, but fuck, that's just amazing. Yeah, that actor, man. And I think if you're really into watching someone get into a character, he really gets into the character. The movie is hard to sit through, though. Not because it's a bad film. It's just very graphic. and it's Yeah, it's very, very uncomfortable. It's very uncomfortable. And you just feel fucking dirty. Like, they did yeah. a really good job of making you feel dirty. Um, yeah. The only it. other movie I can compare it to is uh, Henry Portrait of a Killer. Mm. And I have not that. seen that. So that's something to watch in 2021. Yeah, because that definitely has that feel to it as well. Oh, I like feeling dirty, so I'll definitely check it out in 2021. <laughs> you dirty, um, dirty girl, you. That's right. All right, so our next one is Punch in the Gut. So this is something that you didn't see coming, and it just fucking hit you like someone punched you in the gut. So, Scotty, go ahead. All right, so I have a feeling this one may be uh, on both of ours. Okay. Um, My choice was The Dark and the Wicked suicide scene well you were right it definitely <laughs> was on mine that's my first one for sure yeah because i didn't have any other choice on that one, or any other choices that that was like once again when i seen this category i was just like hey, yep i already know what, exactly what it is right off yeah. the bat yeah and fuck when he just walks in and like he's hallucinating seeing his family dead so he just gives up and blows his brains out and then you realize oh, it was a hallucination, and his family's walking in the door. It's like, oh, my God. Like, I, I literally, like, I, I think I was, yeah, I was working when I had to finish because I watched half of it the night before and then watched the other half when I was at work. And I was at work, and when that scene happened, I just dropped my pen, and I'm just like, just staring at the screen. Just it was heavy. Unbounded. Yeah. It's heavy. I agree with you, and I think the way they set it up is just so well done. That that film is an excellent movie. Uh, a lot of people had that as their number one, number twos, or I suspect that they're going to have it as their number one, number twos this year. Yep. And well-deserved. 
well deserved excellent yeah. film um great scene did you have a second place or nope my second place is still are not on my list yet so i did have a second place for this and it was the final speech from spiral so Ooh. spiral was a canadian film i didn't actually know that it was filmed out west and it's it's filmed like it's filmed like it's supposed to be the states but it's actually filmed in alberta and there's a speech that one of the characters gives the other one that we will always hate the dis- the ones that are disliked. You can always create fear from those who are seen as different. And it reflects back on single mothers, um, a couple that is gay, um, a couple that is Muslim, a couple that is different. And I think that that speech right there hit me so hard because it's so fucking true. It is so easy to villainize people who don't fit what we consider the common the common thread that everyone should and i felt like that speech was the most fucking honest thing i saw in cinema this year and i i couldn't get past that suicide scene from dark and the wicked but i could not not acknowledge that writing in spiral um that is very good choice yeah it was it to me i think that movie not the best horror film of the year it's it's well done it's worth the watch but i think the ending was a very clear message and it spoke the truth and it wasn't a message like oh we need to do better it was this is fucking reality and i think it's a reality that we don't want to face yeah and i I give a lot of props to spiral for not making it okay um, just yep. showing that it will be a new group every time that will be victimized. And that really hit me personally. Um, so, yeah. So, great, great choice. choice. Yeah, a couple of ours have been, uh, have been the same. So, our next yeah. one is all the feelings, relationships. So, this is like Scott's fucking category. So, I'm really interested to see what he chose. Oh, you probably already know this one. <laughs> I know. We'll see, though. We had some other movies that could have contended with the one that I think you may have chosen. Yes, but I think this one is still like just because of the dialogue stands up above the rest, no holds barred. And that is once again being brought up on the list after midnight. This is a second award for Adam after midnight. Yes. <laughs> this evening. Because <laughs> this film just. We've talked about it on the show, but when we watched it together, like we both went dead silent for like 10 minutes because of this like speech between the main character and his girlfriend who just came back. And like it hit me so fucking hard because like it felt like my past relationship that I had still been, you know, working my myself through. And honestly, you were just a year fresh out of the divorce. It had just been a year. Yeah. Yeah. And honestly, like, obviously, you have been a big part of helping me get over a lot of this stuff, but <laughs> this movie also has helped me just kind of cope with it in its own way. That's awesome. So, yeah, I I could not, like, once again, it's one of those categories where I've seen it and it goes, after midnight, there is no question whatsoever. Like, that one is, like, there's no runner-up for me. That was just, that one is the cake of the relationship horror films this year. That's awesome. Uh, my choice was spontaneous. I really felt like the relationship Mm. that was developed between those two young people. I spent the entire movie dreading what was going to happen. Literally from like, I spent 45 minutes being sad because I knew the ending was not going to be what I wanted it to be. Yep. Um, So for me to get that pull from that, um, I feel like the acting between the two main leads was phenomenal. And then the writing was very, um millennial focus but not vomit millennial focus it was very uh mature and well done and and yeah definitely created a really strong relationship so yeah because this one okay because yeah this one i would say would have been a if i did like more runners up this would have been a runner up for the relationships and it would have been a runner up for the tearjerker yeah, this was definitely some emotions were pulled from this one for sure. Yeah, this well, I felt was... like I spent the whole movie dreading what was going to happen. Yeah. So it didn't like, throw me off. Well, and you and you gave me kind of a heads up saying this is a sad movie. Like, yeah. you watched it before me. So I sat yeah. down and just kind of like waiting. I'm going, nothing good is going to happen. I can already know this is <laughs> this is just going to go horribly wrong. And fuck, I was right. 
but at the same time, like this movie was so incredible with the acting between the characters, like their dialogue was just beautiful. It was incredible. It was a really well done film. So yeah. um, if anyone hasn't a chance to watch this, just know it is very dialogue heavy. You're looking at very much a Juno kind of theme. Um, if you like that, you'll like this film. So uh, our next award is didn't see that coming. So this would be twist ending. So an ending that we didn't see happening for whatever reason. Um, Scotty, go ahead. All right. So most of these that I had like on my list, I had to make sure were ones that I did not watch with you because you almost always like figured out what was going to happen at the end of the movie while we were watching it. And I'm like, like, and me, I would have been surprised because I just don't catch on to shit like that. Like you do. <laughs> <laughs> so I did have two on this one. Um, I will give the runner up first. And that is don't listen. Okay. I yeah. did not expect that ending with uh, the, what happens with the father. Mm-hmm. Um, but then the one that I ended up putting for the award itself is the tent. Awesome. Yeah. Very, very I, much. That's so this is the second award for the tent. Yes. I was going to say, cause yeah, I did not see how that film was going to end the way it did. And when it did like, fuck, it was impactful. Absolutely. Awesome. Uh, well, I have two different ones. So my runner up was sightless. Um, I don't know if you saw sightless. Yes. I did not see that ending. Um, I did not think that the situation that she was in was not her living in an apartment in the city. Yeah. I, I did Good not point. buy that at all until it was revealed that she was not living in an apartment in the city. And I was like, okay. I, I honestly did not, not, not the best movie, very much a basic bitch horror movie that you could kind of throw in with other ones. Um, but man, I did not, I did not catch on. Neither did I. That that was not a real apartment she was living in. So good props to that. Um, but the one that really stuck out to me was The Occupant. And The Occupant is a Spanish film that came out this year. And I really thought things were going to be okay at the end of this movie. And things were not okay. No. Well, they were okay for one person, but they weren't okay for someone else. And the character shift in this to show the level that someone is willing to go to to keep the life that they have uh was insane and um i definitely recommend it uh if you really like spanish dramas um it is it kind of flirts the line of horror i guess you could say but the twist in it holy fuck i did not see that coming so those were my two the excellent choices there yeah so surprisingly low budget film. So this is to we're nominating or recognizing a film that was low budget, but really used their budget well. And Scott and I want to acknowledge, um, you know, how good it was or whatnot. So I'll let Scott go first. All right. So I have uh, two in this one, um, a runner up, which I, I have a feeling we may have like one of these the same, mm-hmm. but a perfect toast is my runner up. You know what? I wasn't, I was going to say give that as my runner up and I didn't. Really? Yeah, but I'm glad you said so because I was like, ah, maybe I'm wrong. That makes me feel better that I'm not wrong. Yeah, because that you could tell that was a very low budget film. Like that was one that we've seen earlier in the year. And, and that was like, the one about an Airbnb for everyone. Yep. This was before the rental, by the way. Um, it was about an Airbnb and some couples going up to rent it. Four, four people going up to stay in it and things are not what they seem. It was almost a similar concept to the rental. Now yes, that I look back. Except the landlord was a little more involved with uh yes. like with the people that were trying to stay at the Airbnb. Yes. But like yes. really good acting made up for some great awkward situations in the film. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And like, yeah, for a low budget film, very good. But yeah, that was just my runner up. The one that I have to give credit to, because we've talked about it on our show multiple times and brought it up earlier, live scream for only yeah. six thousand dollars. Or yeah, I think it was yeah. six thousand dollar budget. Yeah, Fuck, this movie was incredible. But- I I agree. I I agree with you. Though that wasn't my choice. Wow, that wasn't my choice. Now I'm curious. No, my choice was the special. I thought oh. the special did a really good job of building tension, reflecting addiction, and using their money where it counted with with special effects. Um, 
And yeah, it's, it's definitely a low budget movie. You can tell how it's filmed. The acting is decent enough. Um, but what they did where they put their money, they put their money smartly and they really made a solid fucking film. So definitely, I think Scott and I strongly recommend Live Scream, The Special and A Perfect Host. Yes. That these are movies that, you know, if you're if you're looking for something low budget, these are films that are well done and that we should, I think, be supporting for sure. Oh, absolutely. These are all worth the watch, worth the so- rental, everything. The next one is, of course, the opposite. So worth the high budget. So we always see movies that aren't worth the high budget, but Scott and I are going to acknowledge the ones that are worth the high budget. All right. So I will say I was very, very impressed with the high budget of this film, and that is The Turning. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you mean The Haunted House? <laughs> <laughs> uh no there's no way i could pick that one um so this one uh it's i'm just gonna say it, it's possessor yeah the yeah the quality of this film is absolutely incredible you could tell there's a bunch of money put behind this the acting is all freaking amazing the effects are top-notch cinematography is incredible like you could tell there was a lot of money put into this like were there higher budget films this year? Yeah, I can guarantee probably Underwater was way more. And that's also a very good film. But yeah. I just feel Possessor like just had like the money and used it the best ways. Awesome. So I have two. My second place is Underwater. Oh, um, nice. Because I did feel like they used their budget very well. And it was a really great creature, I guess. Is that Lovecraftian? Is yep. that is it, okay? Well, Lovecraftian. Yeah, because Cthulhu film. shows up at the very end. Okay. Lovecraftian, one of the few ones I like. Excellent film. But I wanted to acknowledge the invisible man. I felt Ooh, like nice. how they did the special effects in this one, how um is it Elizabeth Moth? Moth? Yes, Elizabeth Moss engaged in the special effects um fucking phenomenal and she's getting toured around that living room and she's basically fighting with the invisible man fuck was that well done uh great and and i loved how they kind of tied in how the suit was made i thought that was very uh 2020 ish um so yeah i i really felt like the invisible man was worth the high budget for me personally and then second being underwater that that is a both excellent choices Thank you. All right. So this is where we get into some real hard ones. Um, So I'm just going to start off. These are our basic bitch ones, but I feel like they should be acknowledged. So we're going to start off with best Shudder film. And let me just start off by saying this year for Shudder fucking nailed it. It was difficult for me to choose a best because I loved a lot. So I really had to look at my own personal preference and my own personal likes for this award, because I wouldn't say that this film is better than other ones on Shutter. It was just better for me. So I want to preface that with this one, because I just feel like Shutter fucking brought their A game this year. Absolutely. Um, if you want from here, from here on out, I can start doing the awards and then let you go first. I want to do the awards. Uh, okay, fair, fair enough. I was just, I'm the I was... one that wrote all of them. <laughs> True, you do. You are. I was just. I was just offering to let. I was going to give you a little break. I was trying to steal. Scott, get back in the back seat. Okay, fine. (laughs) I'm sorry. I like doing the intro. It's fun. If you want to add something, you can go ahead and add something. This is awkward. Why do you have to make this awkward now that mommy and daddy are fighting on the award show? (laughs) Is there something you want to say about Shutter? Shutter sucks. Terrible exclusives. <laughs> Worst movies ever this year. I yeah, can't believe it. Go <laughs> the paper shutter. <laughs> Such a waste. Man. Stupid shutter doesn't even have the films for Canadians. That's some bullshit. <laughs> like Blood Quantum? How about that one? Dropped on American shutter. Canadian film, not dropped on Canadian <laughs> right. shutter. Right. Like, what the fuck? I think. That's uh, okay. That's okay. That's okay. All right. So, yeah, like you were saying with shutter, this has been freaking crazy year for them they have released so much good content um but i ended up going with uh i had a runner-up which was ghost killers versus bloody mary because that just... oh that wasn't your number one nope oh it went back and forth between this one and the other film i'm about to bring up and like i just decided like what which one did i enjoy more as an experience and okay. 
one that kind of shocked me as well that I enjoyed it as much as I did, and that is Anything for Jackson. Very nice. Excellent fucking film. Excellent film. God, like that movie just completely unnerved me. Was so effective. Like the effects in it were amazing. The creature designs were incredible. The story was fun to follow. Mm -hmm. It was just fucked up. Mm -hmm. And then to top it all off, you find out the director made Hallmark Christmas movies and it's going, how is this? The week before. (laughs) Yeah. Oh man. You know what though? It was well directed. I remember watching that Hallmark Christmas movie and I remember turning to my friend, Anne, who is when I, who I was watching it with. And I went, man, this movie's like really shitty, but it's well directed. (laughs) Yeah. Like, well, I just found out. Uh, kind of just off topic for a second, but uh, I was listening to uh, Outside the Cinema and they were reviewing uh, the I Spit on Your Grave remake with another movie. Apparently, the director of I Spit on Your Grave, the remake, after he did part one and part two of that remake, he quit horror and is now done nothing but Hallmark Christmas movies. Oh, good for him. You know what? I could see that after this. Those movies are fucking fucked up you know yeah i was just like wow i want to see happiness moving forward maybe he got married and he wanted his kids to be able to see his movies and shit so maybe he was just like you know i got everything i needed to vent out of me with those two movies i'm done let's get some bright happiness going and let's just do christmas movies and fucking fall festival shit yeah did you so what's your second place ghost killers Mm -hmm. was that your second place okay um so as i said this was a very difficult category for me obviously same with scott um, my second place was Metamorphosis. Mm, I thought nice. that this was a fucking phenomenal exorcism film. One of the best that have ever come out. Um, I know people love the exorcism, and I'm not saying this is better than the exorcist, but fuck, this movie was good. Yeah, this was um, amazing. It was exorcism. a good modern telling of um, of exorcisms. And it's, and it's you know, fitting that my first one is The Cleansing Hour. Nice. Um, so, and it's funny because I don't like exorcism films <laughs> Right. Um, but both of these movies really, really spoke to me. Uh, the dialogue in both, the relationships in both, um, how evil the demon is in both. Yeah. Really, really, really stood out as an excellent antagonist. Um, the torture that the demon causes in both. I can still clearly remember each scene of the movies. I can remember the bedroom scene in Metamorphosis with the daughter tied to the bed. I can remember the girl tied to the chair and the demon animals running around in, in cleansing hour. Like I can clearly remember shit from these movies that has imprinted in my brain. And I think that says something when you're able to, um, to walk away from a film and still remember it. So, you know, yet again, these are our personal preferences. <laughs> Shutter fucking nailed it this year. So if you don't have Shutter, please, 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 please look at getting Shutter. It is worth your time. Yeah, especially for only four ninety nine a month, you cannot go wrong. Can't go wrong. So next is best Netflix film. And as I said earlier, uh, Netflix nailed it, but Netflix tends to nail it in a lot of international films Yes, um, and a lot of international horror. So I'm going to let Scotty say what his, I, I don't know. Do you have two or one films for this? Um, I have uh, one, but then I did have one that I do want to give a shout out to. Okay. Cool. Leo. Uh, so I want to give a shout out to that anthology that was on there called ghost stories excellent oh yeah that was a good one it yeah because just like the because that was a hindi film right it was it was a hindi film yeah yep so like i had a lot of the like hindi uh folklore and a lot of their beliefs interwoven into it mm-hmm. i being the dumb american i what i am if i did not talk to you about like a lot of this <laughs> stuff i would not have like caught on to any of it But then talking to you before I watched this movie, like it just made the experience that much more enjoyable. And wow, this was just like one of those where I would have just skipped past it on Netflix, just kind of scrolling by because it's just like, yeah, one of those films. And I'm glad I ended up watching it because this was just like a lot of fun. It was a great anthology all around. Awesome. Um, But the main one I want to give a shout out, like for Netflix, for me, it was just no real question. It is like probably the best on here and it's going to be on a lot of people's top tens i can guarantee it and that is the platform yeah yeah it's just a freaking well-made movie that came out at the right time that spoke yeah. volumes of our society and how everything is going around the world like it just hit home like almost too close to home at some point yes yes absolutely i uh no surprise my first was the platform as well 
Ah, nice. Right. Um, definitely. And that, yet again, this is a personal thing. I felt this movie, as, as Scott said, the acting in it, the, and I recently did another podcast where we went into the political meanings behind it and, and talked a little bit deeper into it. And I just feel like Spanish films deliver and the platform fucking delivers. And yes. It is. It talks about social class. It talks about um, communism. It talks about human behavior, and it is an excellent film. Second place I did want to give a shout out to is The Call, um, which is also available on Netflix, and an excellent film. One of the one of the better ghost stories, I think, anyway, to come out this year. Yeah. Um, I call it a ghost story. I know some people don't think it's a ghost story. That's fine. I just I look at that because the chicks in the past and you know this other girls in the present maybe i'm wrong when by using that definition but anyway i think it was definitely one of the better movies to come out this year so netflix is shutter man you can't go wrong this year uh netflix for international shutter for everything yeah. um you know it's 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 definitely both of these are worth your investment so our next is best on demand film there was a lot of on demand films this year so scotty what are you saying well it was I, when I did the research for all these on-demand films, because there were a lot of them, uh, going through that list, going to get another award. It's After Midnight. I, Excellent. I've I seen it on the list. I mean, this if, is the third award for After Midnight. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, like, I mean, honestly, it's it's me. And if that movie's on that list, of course I got to freaking pick it. <laughs> of course. Absolutely. No, I, I can't disagree with you. Uh, for me, it was The Closet. Absolutely. Nice. Um, one of the best films i've seen this year uh, i can't praise it enough south koreans just know how to fucking knock it out of the park so they do you know scotty has acknowledged after midnight obviously it's a very good film we encourage you to watch it and i also encourage you to watch the closet yes that movie i just watched it on christmas day and freaking incredible awesome awesome film so now we move to prime so prime took some digging this year um, we we found some really good, and when we say best prime, we mean the free ones that's included yep. with prime. Um, <laughs> took some digging this year, um, but Scotty, what was your best prime film? All right, this is just one that I had just so much fun with, and it just had a it was over the top and gory, and it also had just a just a great charm to it, and the main like antagonist in it, like I just loved him, and that is Uncle Peckerhead nice awesome awesome i just had so much fun with this film and uncle peckerhead himself is just like this just charming southern gentleman that just happens to turn into a demon for like an hour and do violent horrible things <laughs> but it's it was so, so true, much yeah. fun it was a fun movie and it was just it was it was refreshing it was a nice break from intense yes and it allowed you to be silly and just and be silly and you know it's supposed to be a comedy um it is a horror comedy and you, you can just <laughs> shut off your brain and watch it and have a good time absolutely because yeah this is just one of those that just like i had a smile on my face the whole time absolutely for me it's extracurricular yeah. i i you know will continue to praise this movie i think this movie the acting in it is solid the four individuals that are honor students by day killers by night um you know you can't you can't get something better than this and and just the plot twists in it excellent choice for for prime films for that's sure that's two awards for extracurricular now and that is two awards for extracurricular <laughs> all right and our next segment is into the dark is uh the hulu series into the dark so we had a couple of choices we could make here um some people would just argue that we're choosing poo from other poo uh maybe <laughs> poo that has bow tie on it opposed to poo that has it's, it's, bow tie it's on got it. a pretty bow tie though it's a it's um fine. I liked the Into the Dark films. I have no problem admitting that. I thought they were bubblegum, easy to digest fucking horror films. I don't put too much stock into them. If I want to watch something with someone who may like horror, maybe not too much, I throw one of these on and it's easy to digest. So yep. that's my thought on Into the Dark, um, which is why we created a category. So Scotty, what did you think was the best one to come out this year? Um, I am going to say mine. My... It was, uh, I'll give a, shout out because there's only i think what seven of them this year because yeah. covid kind of stopped it from finishing up um but i will give a runner up is good boy just because that's that just, is cute it's just a cute kind of like fun horror film absolutely um, but the one that i thought was the best of all of them was uh puka lives me too nice yeah <laughs> that one was so funny 
The it lines was, in it were great. It was great, and like it built up like an urban legend with Puka, who like really wasn't the, that like a supernatural being in the first movie at all. No, and I love how like they keep talking about how hot the police officer is in it. Yes, like their buddy, they're like, "Oh man, he's so fucking hot." Oh, look at him, he's so fucking smoking. He looks so good. Like there were some funny fucking one-off liners in it too. There like, really there was, was. some really great one-liners. That was it. Was just fucking funny, and it was easy to watch. And I kind of found it like some of them were a little downer. Like I saw Un- Uncanny Annie, and that one's a real fucking downer. If you ever saw that one, it's no, yeah, yeah, that's one I have not watched yet. You were telling me I should check it's, out. It's good, but it's a downer one. This I just it was easy, fun, fluffy. Um, yeah, I hope to see more into the darks. I like them. I think they're easy to sit through um, and likable films. So yeah, next is we have our best Hulu film. So yeah, and this one I want to preface it before. Um, I am uh, we I ended up creating the list for all the Hulu films that were available because there was only I think three or four exclusives that Hulu actually like made and released themselves. But everything that was on this list is something that you can just turn on Hulu and it is there to watch. So like there's films on here that were not on here months ago, but they're on Hulu now. So I yeah. put them in the category. Absolutely. So it's what you could go and watch today kind of thing. Yeah. So what was your, uh, what was your Hulu film? Uh, this one was just no contest once I seen it was on Hulu and that is Rent-A-Pal. Same with me. <laughs> like yeah, I'm not going to bullshit. It was the exact same with mine, too. That is awesome because that, yeah, that movie is just absolutely incredible. The acting in it is amazing from main character, and Will Wheaton is Andy, like, plays like just such this, like, happy go lucky, but somehow slightly sinister video date guy that's just trying to be his friend. And, like, you just feel so much sympathy for the main character, like, and everything he's going mm-hmm. through. And honestly, to an extent, I could relate. Like because I've you are there. dating, you know, and it's true. When a chick comes over and puts her hand on his thigh, he just he can't I freak out it. and go. <laughs> That's it. And he likes to go roller skating too and eat snacks. That's his other thing too, right? I do, I do. And I, when I'm really lonely, I play cards with my uh, imaginary friend Andy. <laughs> well, you do play magic. <laughs> It's It's true. (laughs) Yeah, I think you took the words right out of my mouth. I think the acting by everybody in this and how much you you feel for the main character who does a very big character arch shift and you just feel sorry. You feel sorry. You feel sorry for a lot of people. You even feel sorry for the girlfriend. Um, And I think that that says a lot. I'm glad Hulu picked this up because if you have Hulu, this is a must watch. Actually, stop listening to this podcast and go watch Rent a Pell right now. Yeah, absolutely, um, 100% agree. You will not regret that decision. We do not say that about Puka Lives. <laughs> nope. <laughs> but we will say that about Renta Pal. Um, so our next category is most politically relevant. So what did we feel either uh, represented this year or politics in general? Uh, Scotty, what did you feel? Oh boy, this one was uh, kind of a tough one because there's been, there's quite a few films that hit that political relevancy this year. Yep. Um. But I ended up uh, going with, uh, well, I'll give a shout out to Antebellum. Absolutely, yeah. I don't want to shit on that movie, but that movie was a fucking fine movie. It wasn't yeah. like top 10 material or top 20 material, but it was a good fucking film. Exactly. And like, like, and the message it was coming across, like, yeah, it was kind of just like in your face and obvious, but. And it was it more was... than slavery is bad. Okay, people? Like, yeah. It was more than slavery is bad. We all we all know that you know that slavery is bad. It was about what they were trying to do to African Americans in present date. That's what that yes. was about. Not about fucking slavery being bad. Fuck <laughs> <laughs> sake. Anyway. Uh, but Sorry. the one that <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> but the one that I ended up going with uh, was body cam. Excellent choice. Yep, because of all the police brutality, Black Lives Matter movement going on, and the and the war between like Blue Lives Matter as well. Like this is just like one of those that felt almost uncomfortable when it came out because it came out right around the time that all this stuff started like becoming more well known and the protests really started like ramping up. And like it got very uncomfortable during a couple of scenes in this film. Yeah. But it yeah, it is the probably into my in my eyes like next to a few other ones like because i could have went on a list of like five movies in this one for this category yeah. 
But yeah, this is the one that I felt just was very politically re- relevant at the time. Awesome. 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 I, uh, for me, it was his house. Yep. I feel like I had a feeling. House, yeah, it really, uh, not only did it take a, a real honest look at refugees and how they're treated, and I really enjoy, um, I want to make something very clear, is that unless you've been a refugee, you don't actually know how refugees are treated. So yeah. just to be very clear here, you can't comment to that. So I thought that that was very good about this movie. I thought um, what people are willing to do to get out of their own country and how behaviors they may engage in was very real um yep. was very relevant and the acting was phenomenal of course there's a horror twist in it as well which makes this movie very 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 well done um another strong recommend from me this year i really enjoyed yeah. it that was quite a bit same here because like it is very relevant it's frightening with the like the horror in it and like it's kind of one of those horrors that unfortunately the main character kind of brought upon themselves because it came with them Absolutely. No, you're a hundred percent right. So, so our next is most reflective of 2020 and we didn't really give any kind of guidelines for this one. So who knows where both of us went. (laughs) (laughs) That's so true. (laughs) So Scott, um, I guess, how did you, how did you choose this? What do you think was most reflective of 2020? Um, Well, when I was looking at the list, because once again, there's a few that could be very reflective of everything that's going on politically pandemic wise just how you were in your like where you were in your life at the during this year Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um but what i ended up going with was something that dealt closer to uh home with the pandemic Mm. and i chose only from netflix you know what's funny i chose that and then i changed my mind did you really yeah so i i want to hear you talk about it yeah so this one just uh when we first, when we both originally first watched it, we were just like, "Well, this is very heavy because it is too real." Like, what yeah, is- it's it's very realistic. Yeah, because the quarantine, like the way that this like disease pretty much just like spreads so quickly around mm-hmm. the world, and like, but man, very very good film, very well acted, and you just it's something if you're not in the right uh, head state not a good movie to be watching during this time of this year. No, I would agree with you 100%. It's definitely a really well-acted film, and it went under the radar. It was a film festival film, um, and I think because of the the content, it just came out at the wrong time. Yeah. Uh, you know, we're back in quarantine here in Ontario. Uh, it, you know, cur- curbside pickup for retail and all the you know, tourist attractions are closed. We can't go to cinemas. We can go to obviously the grocery store, the pharmacy, um, and you can do retail pickup. So like, if I really wanted something from Lululemon, I could order it from Lululemon and go pick up my sweatpants if I really needed. Um, right. And gyms are closed as well too. So it's, you know, I, I think for some people only may have been hit too close to home, but I agree with you a hundred percent. I think it's a, a really well done movie. It's just, I feel like this is a movie that will be checked out years from now. I feel like yeah. for some people, it just may be too soon. Yeah, I completely agree. Cause yeah, like this is just very realistic with the way a lot of the people in the movie act too. Yes, very much so. Right. So um, it's funny. The one I chose was host. And uh, oh, yeah. the reason why I chose host was simply because I thought it was so smart that they a made it during the pandemic. And I don't think host is the best movie in the entire planet. But I think for what it is being filmed solely on Zoom, reflecting the culture of what was going on in that moment, I think it has its place in time in history, and especially in film history. I think that it the acting was great by the characters in it. Um, they're doing no different than what Scott and I are doing right now. Yeah. Which is using Zoom. And if shit started going down, like if Scott started twirling around the room right now, <laughs> I would feel absolutely helpless. Like I wouldn't know what to do. I'd be like, you know, all joking aside, like if Scott was watching me and some dude broke in behind me. Yeah. And he, and then the screen goes blank, he would be fucking freaking out, you know, yeah. like, and unable and feeling helpless. Like here, here you are watching people that you care about go through things and you have absolutely no control or no way to get to them. So I thought that, you know, the sense of loss of control as well was really relevant in 2020. And yeah, just it was very used, relevant. And I thought that was really smart as well. So I, I want to give a shout out to host. Yeah, that's a 
great choice because yeah, that I didn't I didn't even that one didn't even cross my mind when I was going through the list. And well, yeah, that's that why we uh, did this, right? So we could bring up some other stuff. Yeah, that is very true. So our next is anthology film of the year. So you know, there's been a lot actually. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, and this was actually a really hard call for me. I liked most of them that came out this year, to be honest with you. I, there was few I didn't like, um, or even like, I wouldn't say I hated, there were just some that were kind of average, but I didn't think anything was horrible. Even, uh, December I thought was okay. Yeah. You know, I, I didn't hate it. It wasn't like the worst thing I've ever watched. It wasn't, uh, the ABCs of horror. Um, <laughs> right. Thankfully. Even some shorts in that were actually pretty cool. It was just that you had to sit through a lot of other stuff. That's yeah. all. Um, but anyway, Scotty, what did you choose? Uh, for this one, I ended up, uh, there's one that kind of stood above the rest uh, for me. And that was the Mortuary Collection from Shudder. Same with me. Just, fuck, that was, each story was really well done. The wraparound story, which with most anthologies, that is the issue you can like, say yeah, is uh the wraparounds weak. yeah the wraparounds are pretty weak yeah this one was solid as hell and to have clancy brown as the freaking caretaker of this funeral home pretty much playing his best uh tall man impression from phantasm like it was it just brought a smile to my face because for one i'm a huge clancy brown fan when i see him on screen i just smile like an idiot because he's just so good on screen and but yeah then all four of these stories in this were all really good like in highly entertaining and had like some moral stories to him which was really nice yeah well acted well filmed great practical effects i do want to give a runner-up shout out to scare package i know scott did not enjoy scare package as much as i did um but i really liked it yeah that's what i still want to give a second watch to because i have a feeling my opinion may change a bit on it i think the video store part and then the part yeah. where he like shaves his head <laughs> to be a cancer survivor with the whole Jason thing. It's pretty fucking funny. Um, you know, and um, Joe Bob's Briggs is in that one. So I guess, you know, for everyone out there that loves him, it's it's a pretty big deal. I thought that one was really clever and really funny. As I said, I know Scott wasn't the biggest fan. And I do agree that the Mortuary Collection was a better film altogether. But I really did enjoy the wraparound and the VHS store and or the, like whatever it was, some kind of like horror catch-all everything store. I thought it was clever. Um, yeah. So I wanted to give a shout out to that movie. Yeah, that's that I, for good reason, because I remember you loved that one when it first came out. It, I just thought it was really funny. So, yeah. So but a lot of good anthologies this year. Please check them out. Um, best international film. Now, this is a hard one. There was a lot of good international films. I had a really tough time. Yeah, <laughs> this one is very tough. Like I'm looking at what I picked and I'm going, man, I, I could still choose a couple different ones. Right. In this you wonder if it's the right call, right? Yeah. So. I will say for the runner-up, I went with The Call. Oh, nice. Nice, yeah, nice. That movie is just freaking amazing. Anything that has to deal with, like, time travel kind of st scenario is very hard to pull off, and they pulled this one off very well. Yeah, for sure. I agree with you. Um, but the one that I ended up going with, just because such a high-quality film, and I already brought it up once earlier, that's The Platform interesting interesting yeah but i always all like i'll see what else you uh come up what your choices are and i'll give a couple more shout outs if they haven't been chosen well i only have one um only, not because i didn't like a lot this year but i really really had to think about what did i think was the best quality what do i think nailed it in every single atmosphere and it was metamorphosis oh, i nice. can't you know i can't talk about a film I, that film to me has no flaws. Um, yeah. I think that the storytelling is amazing. The special effects are amazing. The acting is amazing. The scene where there's doppelgangers is so fucking good. Um, I was on, I, I was on the edge of my seat watching that film. And even though, you know, the platform, the call, the closet. Um, yeah. You just named the other one. I was going to, you know, drop. like his house, um, which is technically a British film. Um, you know, there's some really great fucking other films that are out there. But if I think of the best international film, uh, even Warning Do Not Play and some other ones that were quite well done, um, 
metamorphs this hands down nice that is a very good choice um and i did not expect you to go with that one actually i thought oh no i was thinking get in would get a yeah uh, i really do love get in um and i think get in is an excellent film but i think you might be surprised i have not lost my appreciation for that but i think when i really looked back and thought about films that hit it in every way possible um it didn't hit it every way possible metamorphosis did so that yep i can see that uh and there are two i would like to just give a shout out because sure. like this is really hard one but uh i want to give a shout out to the soul collector or as it's also excellent. known eight excellent film. african folklore and it was just really well done and also in Pedagore. excellent movie as well excellent oh man the international films yeah. about it this year. there's like, so many oh fuck like yeah if you if you have not watched these international films yet on netflix or on uh shutter do yourself a favor and do so because you will not be disappointed yeah Some solid solid stuff so um impressive theatrical release so this was either um something that was released in theaters or was supposed to be released in theaters because theaters open and closed at different times for scott and i um so if it got a theatrical run at all <laughs> or was supposed to we counted it um so scotty yep um this one is also just going to be getting another award and that is possessor nice because that Very was nice. uh that was like in select theaters around my area. I never got a chance to go see it in theaters. I wish I would have now, but like I would have had to drive 45 minutes to go see it. And I just didn't feel like making the drive for that, but I'm Very trying fair. to take myself for that now. <laughs> Very fair. Um, for me, it was Come Play. Come nice. Play to me was the underdog this year. That yeah. is a great fucking film. Excellent, excellent um, ghost, demon, story, whatever you want to call it. Phenomenal acting. One character was a little annoying, but otherwise, um, that was a movie that I went to and I was like, oh my God, what's going to happen next? Oh my God, what's going to happen next? Oh my God, what's going to happen next? And simple concept, excellent execution. Yep. That's a very good movie. Now I've been looking forward. This is our only technical negative award. So Scott yeah. and I uh, don't usually give negative awards. <laughs> it's just not, I don't see the point of talking about how shit a movie is when it comes to awards. You hear that all year round. We talk about it when we talk about what's worth watching or not. We tell you our thoughts on it. So there's no need to repeat it, but we did want to acknowledge what we thought was overhyped. Now, when I get my movies for this, I am not saying that these are bad movies. I just think that they were overhyped and that there were other movies that were actually better that didn't get the attention that they should have. So, Scott, what did you think was overhyped this year? All right. Well, I want to preface this by saying that, uh, yep, I kind of went with the direction that you did where it's just like what the community in general really liked, but also what I had overhyped in my head before going to see it. Mm, okay. And that would be the lodge <laughs> number the same with me <laughs> <laughs> like this is one of those movies that on paper like with a scene the trailer and everything i'm like this is so my freaking jam mm -hmm. i'm gonna love this movie mm -hmm. like and i just started building myself up like oh i can't wait i can't wait i'm so looking forward to this movie watched it and i'm going <sighs> that was not as good as i was hoping it was gonna be and it had some flaws in it that Others did not find f as flaws that I've heard, but for me, it was too much of a distraction and too it took away from the film for me. So like, I didn't feel it had enough of an impact, and I called the movie in the first fifteen minutes. And, yes, you did. You know, when I can do that with a film like that, I shouldn't be able to. Now I know people really like it. I will acknowledge that the acting was good. Yep. Um, it was I think shot the well. filming was good. It was shot well, but I found that it was boring. Um, personally probably because I knew it was going to happen. And I, and I felt like that particular plot was overdone and I will not take away from someone who really enjoyed this. If this is your jam, because there's movies like that I like that other people aren't, and that's okay. Yeah. You know, we're allowed to be different. I just think that that movie got a lot of hype when there was some other good films out there. And I also felt the same way about the rental. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. Another good one. Right. I think the rental was fine. I think it was, Yet again, some killer actors, but that script was painful. Like, like, can we go over the top of that? He's having a fucking affair. Like, I get it. Right. He's having a fucking affair. Like, it was <laughs> just, and then the social justice shit in it. It was just too much for me. Um, so, yeah, not a horrible movie, but I do think that it is overhyped. Yet again, if people liked it, that's fine. But I think there's other movies that were better that came out this year. 
Yep, completely agree. Did you have um, a second movie, or was that just your? That was just the only one that I like, yeah. Okay. Possessor, if not done the way it was, would have been for sure. Because yeah. like I was overhyping that one in my head as well. But that one nailed everything about it. Awesome. Uh, next one is underhype. So these are movies that maybe we feel that the community hasn't talked as much about. Um, maybe you know you should check out if if you get a chance to. So Scott. All right. So uh, I wanted to give a quick uh, runner up to After Midnight because so many people just kind of just pushed this one by the wayside and really didn't think it was gonna was a horror film in general or didn't think it was that great. For but for me, I thought it was just underhyped obviously like i've been hyping the shit out of this movie all year long yeah the one that really stood out to me this year uh had some very mixed reviews but i just fucking loved it and that was the shutter exclusive scare me yeah i i agree that movie deserves a lot more attention than it got because yeah. like i think i talked about it before but this felt like a two two person stage play um, I think the issue that came along with this movie was when you read the synopsis, it sounded like you're getting yourself an anthology film. Mm -hmm. And when you watch it, it plays out like an anthology film, minus the visuals of each story they're telling being like something different. That it's literally you're just watching them tell spooky stories to each other with like some like animated stuff going on behind them. Yeah. But just all around, I just had so much fun with this film i laughed i like i was just so like the chemistry between the two characters is incredible i agree with you 100 like it like if you had two other actors in this film it could not have been done like these two just nailed it and i believe the uh the main lead the guy i believe he was also the director i, I could be wrong on that but i think that was the case but i think you're right but yeah i just loved this movie to death and it's become one of my surprise favorites of the year. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. I think this movie was not given the attention that it should have been given. Um, for me, it was live screen. Yes. I think that when people say no one's talking about this movie, I will on I will clearly say no one is talking about this movie except for the people that I've said to watch it. Yep. So <laughs> yep, and Mark Nato, who told us. And Mark Nato, Brandon Orlick, you and me. Um, yep. <laughs> so, you know, I will stress again that this movie is worth the money. It is worth the rental. Yes, you do have to be okay with low budget. Yes, you do need to be okay that it's from a video game perspective. So if that's not your jam, total respect here. You may not enjoy it. But if you've been thinking about it and it sounds like something of interest to you, I encourage you to check it out. Second runner up I want to give to this is His House. I think His House came out and people were like, oh, this movie, that's cool. And then it kind of went by the wayside. I don't think it got brought to the surface of how it should have got brought to because it really is a well-made better. It is a well, sorry, well-made movie that is better than a lot of other films that have come out this year. Yep. That is a very good choice for runner up. Um, all right. So next is we're going to talk about survival horror. So Scott, what was your favorite survival? There was a lot this year. Yeah. There was, there was, there was a lot. So yeah, surprisingly there was no, some duds, but there are also some pretty good ones. Um, the one, The one that stood out to me that, once again, is one that I have not heard many people talk about is Outback. No, just kidding. Just kidding again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, the one that I want to bring up, though, is a Netflix exclusive called The Decline. Nice. I just love the whole uh, survivalist, like, a bunch of survivalists going together to, like, just train and be better at being survivalists out in the wilds mm -hmm. and just bad shit happening like with them. And then like one circumstance after another, and then all of a sudden they're becoming hunted while trying to survive the elements. It just worked so freaking well. All the acting was really yeah. good. It was very tense. Uh, the characters were pretty freaking smart on how to survive and where actually, and it made sense. Like, cause you know, there are the survival horror films where, okay, how is this idiot actually surviving? Where this one, you're going, these people know what they're doing and they're still getting picked off. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like it was just very, very well done film. I agree with you 100%. Well, I think I told you about that film, didn't I? Did I watch it first and tell yeah, you about it? You watched it, it yeah. first and you're like, you need to see this. I'm like, okay. Did you have a runner up or? Nope, no runner up on this one. So my survival horror was Alone, but the one that's directed by John Himes, 
Um, the one about the single lady who is driving in her okay. car. Um, she's a widow and she gets stalked and she goes through a series of events. There's very few actors in this film, but the actors that are in it are incredibly, are, are very good. Um, the choices that she makes are, um, you know, questionable at times, but then it gets better as it continues on. Uh, so I want to give a shout out to that one. And as a runner up, I, uh, VSW, BF, VFW. Oh, I didn't even I think about placing that, that survival, one. Was, yeah. What was happening to them and just, you know, they're, they pulled that veteran shit and they just fuck shit up. So they I think sure those, do. those two movies are very different survival themes. Um, very, very well down form films. So next is It's Not Horror, Yes It Is, which is basically Scott and I saying, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> we don't really care whether you think this is horror or not. It was horror to us. So yep. if you don't, that's cool. But Scott and I don't give a fuck. So <laughs> Scott, what is your movie? All right. So I got a runner up on this one. Okay. And the runner up is The Swerve. That was my first nice yeah yeah yep that that movie deserves attention because this is definitely horror in a different very real way absolutely um the one that i wanted to bring up though as my choice was spontaneous really interesting yep Yep, because the horror like this one is the uh fear of dying yeah and that it could happen at any point and then obviously it's like it's a coming of age movie. Like it's more drama than it is horror, but the horror is there with like everybody being terrified of being like possibly dying any second. Yep. Uh, also kind of relates to 2020 with everybody being quarantined to find out the disease, what's going on. And to find out there's not much they can do because there's a second strain, but we found out the second strain is just like the first strain. So yep. it's really not that big of a deal, but yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but it all kind of rolls back and relates, and then you know, just the exploding bodies and this, like, especially during the, like the middle. I think it was the second act when like everything just goes to shit. Oh yeah, totally. And like, there's a bunch of explosions all at one time, randomly. Yeah, it almost reminds me of like a school shooting. Yeah, that's that's like the way they're reacting to it is exactly yeah. how I pictured it too. I wondered if it was looking at all tragedies in school, and then you know what? Now that I look back on it, fuck, I think that's what they were doing. Yeah. Like, because I started thinking the exact like the, same thing. The accident of driving. Yep. The the random compassion in class, like maybe someone having an aneurysm and dying at school and stuff like that. And then the multiple deaths, a school shooting. Like, yeah. Like, and yeah, fuck. Shit. Good call, yep. Scott. Yeah. I never thought of that. That's really smart. And well, for me, the swerve, I think it's just the slow decline, the slow, steady decline. And some of the choices that the character makes that are just heartbreaking. There is a punch in the gut scene there that wasn't as punch in the gut as other scenes, but there's one where the character realizes that she's harmed her own children. Um, yeah. And oh, that was pretty upset about scene. it. And that's that's a tough scene to see. The acting in it is is phenomenal. Absolutely. The swerve. Excellent movie and spontaneous. So the next category is Haunting Done Right. So, Scott, who do you think got it right this year? Uh, The one that I would say got it absolutely correct this year, The Closet. My number one as well. (laughs) Nice. Yep, yep. Like, like, fuck, like, because it's one of those where the father is just so desperate to find his daughter who disappeared. Absolutely what lengths he will go to to find her when it even comes to supernatural and the way these ghosts appear are freaky and creepy and like at the same time very like they have all very sad stories like it's just a well done haunted house or haunted film i couldn't agree with you more yeah i i think you've summed it up and of course south korea um you know it holds on to things that are comfortable it it really explores child abandonment you know not always so dramatic child abandonment like just problems and dysfunctional families and the demands on parents times and the outcome of it and of course it's an exaggerated you know concept but it's a scary movie it's it's well done it's suspenseful and you care about what happens a lot yeah and the ghost is creepy very creepy very creepy um multiple ghosts are in it are very creepy so yeah i'm glad we had the same one for that did you have a runner-up or nope that was the the one that i thought of yeah yeah i agree 
All right, next one. Is it science fiction? Is it horror? Who cares? It's good. So this is second fuck you award that Scott and I have. So Scott, what did you put in this category? Probably the same thing you put, and that is Dark Encounter. That was my second. I actually really? have one above that, yes. Okay, so yeah, this one, it's uh, probably one of the more surprising Amazon Prime films that I'd seen this year, thanks to Heather. Yes, yes. And uh, like, it's pretty much a alien invasion with a twist at the end that now that I'm thinking about it, should have been my twist that I didn't see coming for my cat, my award. Yeah, I considered it, um, but I really, I I went with with the occupant. Um, but yeah, I think this was a good twist too. Yeah, and I have to say, this is just like such an amazing movie. The performances all around are great. Yeah, uh, it's way more sci-fi drama than it is horror, but there are the horror elements of the aliens and the fear of losing your daughter and to find yeah. out what really happened to your daughter. Yeah. It's just absolutely mortifying absolutely um the what i included here was what lies below um, what lies below is a uh is an underdog that's come out towards the end the latter half of 2020 and it is very science fictiony but it is very good yeah and um have you seen it yeah because that's the one that you thought i was going to absolutely love which yeah did I you did love until, it i enjoyed it until the ending the ending really confused me yeah it really confused you yeah i thought you would like that i do to an extent but this one i just couldn't even have like an explanation in my own head where uh, when i'm usually confused i can at least try to come up with something this one i'm like i don't is know. it because it wasn't they reach or castle freak yes <laughs> i noticed those haven't come up at all today for any awards I you know, must be well, saving just, that for something else just wait till our out of the dark segment oh wait, i bet wait. oh i can imagine they're they're right there <laughs> ready to go um so yeah, what lies below? It's it's a movie basically about a young lady who comes back home, and her mother has taken up with a man, and and he is not what he appears to be. So no, it is very science fictiony. I think it's a very good film. I would recommend it to people as well as I I second what Scott had to say about Dark Encounters, uh, another very good film as well. Um, our next category is a little too real. Dot 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 dot. So, Scotty, what was a little too real for you this year? Uh, that would be The Swerve. Mm, interesting. So that is the second award for The Swerve. <laughs> um, and, and why was The Swerve a little too real? Because it, it's probably one of the most realistic portrayals of mental illness, like seeing the decline of mental illness mm -hmm. on screen. And mm -hmm. I've seen people kind of go down this route before, so it kind of hit pretty hard for me interesting interesting um mine was immortal uh yep. and it goes back to the ones all the stories actually the one about the young lady who's possibly being sexually assaulted by her coach um the second story about tony todd and his wife and her fighting cancer and some choices that she's making and then the final one about a hit and run gone uh gone differently yeah um i think those stories are all fucking well done um yeah it was like watching someone's personal life oh and then the one about um an accident at home that isn't really an accident oh yeah that's right right um and it's just kind of showing the real fucking shit of how shitty people can be yeah like you know when we look at that tony todd story with wife it kind of in the end of it shows what kind of shit person he was like yeah. you know what i mean like he kind of does something where you're like well i get it but that was a real shitty thing to do like a real shitty thing to do um and i yeah so i feel like that movie as good so this would be the third award for immortal um so i definitely it's an anthology that we're suggesting that you check out so yeah it's one of those like that's just surprise it will surprise you when you watch it under the radar but a very very good film so yeah. um next we have best horror documentary so scotty what what uh caught, tickled your fancy this year all right well i've looked at my list and i think i watched five or six different horror documentaries altogether, and this is the one that truly stood out because of how well put together it was and that is blood and flesh the real life and, and ghastly death of Al Adamson. Yeah, that's a good documentary. Solid. Yep, just kind of because I had no idea who this guy was. I think I talked about it on the last show. Like I seen a few of his movies, but I had no idea that was him. 
And it's kind of the way they put this documentary together where they're focusing on his career, then they focus on his life, and then they focus on the tragedy that befalls him at the end, which is just so messed up. But the way it is all put together is so well done and very informative. I agree. Was there any other ones? Uh, The other one I wanted to give a quick shout out to would be uh, Scream Queen. Well, that was my number one. Nice. I, you know, I've heard a lot of criticisms on this documentary. And I think that's fine. You think that, um, oh my gosh, I can't remember the gentleman's Uh, name. Mark Pattinson? 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 You think that he is, uh, so a lot of people have said he whines and stuff. You know, I don't know what it would be like to be an in-the-closet gay man in the 80s. In Hollywood. In Hollywood. Yeah. So I'm going to go on the side of things that I don't know exactly what he went through. So who am I to fucking judge? Um, and I think that, yes, there were parts where I was kind of like, all right, dude, like, kind of think you're dragging this out a little bit. But if that is how he felt, and that is how damaging it was for him. Who am I to tell him that he should feel otherwise? And I think that it did a really good job of capitalize on his journey and where he's come from and where he is at now. And yeah, this may have definitely been a publicity um, because I think it was just like the 20 year anniversary or something like that, or 30 anniversary of Nightmare on Elm Street coming out. So it was, it, I can see why people have mixed opinions on it, but I really enjoyed it. And I think that it was a really well-made documentary and I really appreciated the LGBTQ perspective on it. Um, And I think I would like to hear, not that any gay man can speak for other gay men, but I would love to hear uh, Fry Gay the 13th talk about this documentary. Oh, absolutely. I think they would have a much more you know, clearer perspective. Still, they haven't lived Mark's experience and they can't speak for him, but they I'm sure they have experiences of their own. And yeah. I think that that is a, people that I would want to hear talk about this documentary. And, and second place, In Search of Darkness, I thought that was an actual decent one that talked about like the 80s slashers and yeah. 80s movies and stuff. I thought that was a really fun one as well. Yeah, that was a really well put together documentary. No. Finally, we have got to the awards to end all awards. Oh, yes. <laughs> um, best uncorked film yes. of 2020. Uh, Scott and I, when we saw Dead Sound, we 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 felt bad for uncorked because you, they put out a lot of like, they don't they put it. Well, they, they purchased the rights, I guess you could say, to a lot of fucking shitty movies. But sometimes, you know, sometimes, Scott, they get it. They and, do. Um, we would like to acknowledge where they have got it. So, Scott, what was your best uncorked film? Surprisingly enough, I have a runner up for this as well. So do I. Uh, that's, that's pretty, actually, pretty awesome. <laughs> but, uh, what was it called? The uh, the the runner up was the Devil to Pay, not the Very Devil nice. to Pay, but the Devil <laughs> to, to Pay. pay. <laughs> Very solid. Uh, I would put this one more in like the thriller than horror genre, but very solid film. I highly recommend. But the one that stood out to me that I was just like, wait, this is uncorked. No, this can't be uncorked. No, and that is <laughs> the Retreat. Oh, I couldn't agree with you more. That wasn't my choice, but excellent film. Yeah, because they nailed the Wendigo myth perfectly to like what yeah. we had done research for for our cannibal films. Um, the effects were really well done. The acting was pretty damn good. Like it was just an all around solid horror film. Yeah. Like I was Absolutely. very impressed. It was uncorked. Absolutely. Like there were movies this year where you went uncorked. <laughs> like really? <laughs> um, and mine for this was Range Runner. I oh, yeah. thought Range Runner was an excellent film. And, you know, it's low, it's a low budget film, but I was like, fuck, this is well acted for an uncorked film. Um, and my second to that was Dead Sound. I really liked nice. Dead Sound. I thought Dead Sound was a really decent movie that came out this year. Yeah. And I, you know, we shit on uncorked and we, a lot of times their, their films are, you know, a mix of what you're going to get walking out of it. But I feel like, they probably give a lot of first-time directors, actors, all that kind of stuff, their fresh start, their first start. Yep. And 
I really, really, you know, glad that we created this little category here. So honestly, any of these uncorked films, I would recommend watching. I think you'll have a good enough time with them. Uh, they're not shitty. Yeah, well, the funny thing is, too, uh, it was either our first or second episode. We were joking about how we should do a top 10 uncorked film list. And here we are at the end of the year actually giving an award to an uncorked film just because, like, we already know these uncorked films will 90% of the time or more will not make it on any top yeah, 10 Yeah, I, I don't think anyone would choose any of these on a top 10. They're not top 10 in material, but they're not shitty. They're yeah, exactly. Not- shitty like they're not shitty films they're they're entertaining enough movies you just walk in there with your expectations of a budget and you'll be fine yeah you'll enjoy it. absolutely like I, i'm glad we chose this just to have some fun and like bring attention to some films that will get overlooked exactly and finally horror comedy of the year so uh but you too scotty all right so my runner up on this one was uh freaky very nice very funny movie very oh, good. i just had a blast with it um, but just cause it's my type of comedy, I went with yummy. Really? Yep. Just cause it's that oh, slap. Wow. Sn- it's like, it was like that kind of like over the top violence, but at the same time it was hilarious. Cause like it just was goofy. That's really interesting. My number one was Homewrecker. Nice. I thought that movie was fucking jokes. <laughs> that. <laughs> Especially the dating board game thing. Oh my oh god! Oh my god! The dream hunks or party yes. hunks? Sorry, party <laughs> hunks. And how many kisses you get? And I just felt the two actresses in that movie carried. The script was fine, but they delivered it. They fucking nailed it, and they just nailed like this woman awkwardness fucking shit so well. I really feel that is a a female centric movie. A heterosexual female centric white woman movie. And if you are a heterosexual basic white bitch like myself, then you will probably find this movie fucking jokes because it is funny. And I would like to also acknowledge Uncle Peckerhead. Yes. I <laughs> love um, Uncle Peckerhead. Also a very, very funny movie this year. So that concludes our awards for 2020 so thank you for listening and we encourage you to check some of those out um and if you if you have checked them out you don't like them that's fine you're wrong i'm just (laughs) i'm just just kidding to each their own to whatever taste you have now when we announced that we were going to do an award show we definitely had some feedback that people wanted to hear our top 10 probably because we've watched so many movies this year (laughs) um so as a surprise for sitting through our awards you will hear scott and i's top 10 now we're going to go quickly through these we're not going to expand on them um maybe just like a little bit why we chose them if we haven't talked about them yet um i think a lot of them will be ones we already talked about yeah as with the awards i have no idea what scott's is he has no idea what mine is so i think we'll just go straight through like scott will go 10 to 1 and i'll go 10 to 1 and then we just you know we'll say our goodbyes and our other special little announcement that we have so all right um, scott, and- what was your top 10 well i want to give a quick uh, oh. shout out to a couple runner-ups Oh, okay. You want to do your runners up first? Okay, cool. Yeah, this because I'll get them out of the way. Talk, I'll just list them. Um, okay, cool. Sunad. Mm, yeah, good one. The Swerve. Yep. Uh, Metamorphosis. Nice, nice, nice. Yummy. Nice. The Call and Blood Vessel. Oh, cool. So those were ones that could have definitely been in my top 10 because I enjoyed them so much. Our list is going to be very different. All right, yeah. let's <laughs> see what you have. All right, so starting off at number 10, I have The Dark and the Wicked. I just found that to be a very well-done horror film that just was unnerving, like, and Mm -hmm. had the surprise, like, shocking gut punch scene. Well acted. Well acted film. Yes. Yeah. My number nine is Spontaneous. Very nice. I just love this movie Relationship horror. Yep. It's me. He's like, son of a bitch, I'm in. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) Where Heather's political horror, son of a bitch, I'm in. I am relationships. Right. <laughs> about politics? I'm so angry. It's number one. <laughs> no, that's true. Um, my number eight is The Mortuary Collection. Very nice. Just Excellent freaking film. Freaking amazing anthology. Absolutely. Um, number seven. This is where this, this top 10 was very freaking tough. And this will tell you how tough it was. Because number seven for me, Possessor. 
Wow. I wanted Very this nice. to be higher, but man, there are just so many good films this year. Yeah, I agree. So many good films. Um, then number six was The Platform. Very nice. And surprisingly, one we have not talked about yet. Uh, my number five, Color Out of Space. Oh, fuck. Of course it was. You motherfucker. <laughs> I remember, okay, we watched Color Out of Space January last year. Yep. You. And I remember we finished watching it and Scott turned to me and said, this will be in my top 10. And I said, the year is still young. You son of a bitch. It is in your top 10. <laughs> it is. Like, I wasn't sure if it was going to stay or not, but then I rewatched it a few months ago with a friend. And next thing you know, I'm going. Was it a lady fuck. friend? It was. Well, it's one of what our fellow Scott's listeners. Many ladies. <laughs> well, it's one of our fellow listeners. It was Liz. Oh, okay. Well, did Liz like it? She did. She loved it. Oh, well, that's a nice lady friend. Mm. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I just love this. It's Lovecrafty and a shit. So of course, like that speaks my language. It's bizarre. Nick Cage goes fucking crazy in he's, it. He's and... Nick Cage. Nick Cage as angry Nick Cage. Yes. And it's right. just so, it's so weird and bizarre and disturbing. And the effects that bizarre it Bizarre is also your word of the year. It, bizarre it <laughs> but yeah like the effects are like color like watching this on like a 4k tv it's just like eye meltingly beautiful like just oh i haven't movie. watched it again and i won't i know you won't <laughs> <laughs> i don't hate it like tammy turner does from the uh the horror or um the rock yeah, horror cast. or yeah. yeah the horror cast but it's definitely not something i love either so yeah but i understand yeah <laughs> That's um, interesting. Well, what do you know? Yep, yeah, yeah, that's the one I just like. I think that's the only one that we have not mentioned in our awards. Yeah. So I, um, but my number four, anything for Jackson. Oh, uh, yep. Yeah. Yep. This movie just rocked my world. Loved it. Um, this one slid down because you knew this was my number one for a long time. But Ghost Killers versus Bloody Mary is my number three. I'm glad. I mean, oh, really? <laughs> uh, I still love the shit out of this movie. Yeah, it's um, it's your jam. My number two, also in a way a relationship based movie, Rent a Pal. Oh, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah. Just solid, solid movie. I've watched that twice already now, too, and just gets better on each watch. Um, and then, of course, number one for me, After Midnight. After Midnight stood strong, huh? It did. Like it faded away for a bit, but then when I rewatched it for our relationships episode, it went right back to number one. Oh, nice. That's awesome. And I'm not going to give my 2020 just to be mysterious. I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. I'm going to give my list. Wouldn't that be a fucking shit thing to do? I'd be like, what the hell? Yours, and then I don't give mine. I never give it. Yeah, like, I'm that, done. Like, that was it. Ha ha. <laughs> right? Um, so, yeah, I, I will do similarly to what Scott did. I want to give a shout out to the special spree, his house, the dark and the wicked, the wolf of Snow Hollow, the nice. closet, anything for Jackson and the mortuary collection. All of these were exceptional films. Um, the reason they're not in my top 10 is just personal preference. Uh, if someone chose, uh, many people have, I know, chosen Dark and the Wicked and anything for Jackson as their top ones. And I totally see why. I was just other movies that I preferred more. Yeah. So my number 10 was Come Play. Wow. Um, I thought Come Play pulled emotions from my little Heather heart that I didn't even know I had. Uh, the child actor in that is going to go fucking far one day. Yes, he um, will. When a child similar to the Omen can can express um, feelings and and thoughts without saying a word, from just how they act is fucking phenomenal. So I hope to see this young man and other things. Uh, number nine for me was Processor, Canadian Pride, nice. Canadiana Pride, right there. Um, but it's a solidly good film. I I don't really have anything negative to say about it. Uh, fucking awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, number eight was Follow Me. We haven't brought this up yet either, but really Follow Me is the escape movie. Yeah. Uh, a group of people go away to some European country. I can't remember what it is, and they go to escape room that is not what it seems. The ending of this movie um, was also a punch in the fucking gut to me, and yeah. has haunted me since. And I remember that ending and me being like, fuck, as it ended. 
And that's, uh, that's what made me endear to this movie. The fact that it made me at the beginning, dislike characters to rooting for them, um, to wanting revenge for them, to wanting them to be advocates, then finding out that what I thought was nothing that it seemed. Follow me. Number eight. Wow. Number seven, metamorphosis. Of course. Right. I, I praise this enough. We don't need to hear about it anymore. Number six, the platform. You know, nice. Again. Yeah, I think we both have that at number six. Do we? Is that both yep. our number six? Um, number five, DFW. I I still have a lot of love for that movie when it came out this year. I thought it was a lot of fucking fun. Um, I brought it up a lot throughout this list as well. Uh, number four is The Cleansing Hour. Nice. Number three is The Call. Nice. Number two is Live Scream. And Yay. I will stand by that. I um, I really do believe that was one of the better movies I saw this year. And number one is rent I think rent had no flaws in that film. I, I think that film, the acting, the writing, the filming, the, 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 like just everything it, it played into and you felt such empathy and fear and anger and any film that can make you flip flop to emotions is a good film. So that is my top 10 of 2020. Very different from what my list looked like before. Oh, Scott's super happy. I don't know why he's so happy. Is it because I have a spot at number one? I want to give you a hug. Why? Because I like rent a pal <laughs> Because it was your number one. That makes me so happy to hear. I knew you well, loved it, but I didn't realize like, and for one, this is one of those movies that I suggested to you and Brandon. And I guess I, I, I just feel so happy. I suggested a movie and you loved it. Well, it was no They Reach or Castle Freak, but, you know, it definitely brought its A game. So, you know, this was a phenomenal year for horror. Scott and I have shared our awards. We've gone briefly over our top 10 and some shout outs that we had. Um, please check out the ones that, that maybe you haven't seen that we mentioned. Um, if we're mentioning it, there's a reason why they're a yep. high quality film. We did watch a fair amount this year, so I like to think yeah. our opinion has some kind of bearing. Yeah, speaking but of which, we should say, like, when we say we watched a lot this year, compare our numbers from last year. Oh, I watched 25 2019 movies last year. Yeah. Where, yeah. and I was more than that, but not by much. I was when at you 50. 50? Yeah. Yep, 50 2019 horror films. So I almost uh, multiplied that by five. Like it was quadrupled for yeah. sure. That's insane. And like yeah. you just went above and beyond where you were last year. Well, and you know, and would I do that again? I don't know, probably because we're in quarantine. So yeah, it's probably going to happen a second time because I do feel like you get a better variety of what's out there. Mm -hmm. um, if you push yourself to watch other films and, um, you know, two of my films on here are foreign films. And yes, no, three, here. sorry, three. Three of them are foreign films. And you know, they're all <laughs> fucking solid. And even my shout outs, like The Wolf of Snow Hollow was a really well done movie. Yeah. Um, so was Spree. Like that, that was a really fun fucking 2020 film. Like, I think Mark Nato said it best. This is one of those years where, yeah, you may not have a lot of 10 out of 10s in your top 10. He's like, but I would dare for you to find a better top 40 of the year. Yeah, I agree. I would have a hard time making a top 40 list because of how many good films there were this year. I had a hard time with top 10. Yeah, it's you know? ridiculous. <laughs> like, I would, if someone said to me, oh man, I really think that, you know, anything for Jackson should be in your top 10, I'd be like, yeah, for sure. Like, I totally see why. It just did not connect with me as much as other people, but it doesn't mean it's not a fucking solid film. Right. You know, and I think that that's why we wanted to move away from doing top 10s and why we chose to do awards because we wanted to acknowledge the variety that we had seen yeah. and you know certain things like the documentaries and horror comedies and you know best shutter film best prime film like extracurricular didn't make my top 10 but i love that film yep but same with uh time, right scare me was my most yeah. underhyped and if this uh it would it's definitely in my top 20 and love that fucking movie I don't, you know, my top 20 would be hard. I yeah. probably would just include the ones I've given the shout out to because I thought those were phenomenal. Um, but yeah, I, this was a great year 
for movies. And I want to say three thank yous to uh, Neil Lemoy from NFW. I want to say thank you to Christian Luciani from Exploding Heads. And I want to thank Mark Nato. Um, because of their support, we've been able to see a lot of different movies. Yep. And we really, really appreciate that. Thank you so much. I want to thank Scott for sharing Shutter with me. Thank you, Scott, for opening the doors to Shutter for me and helping me get movies <laughs> that unfortunately didn't come out in Canada. So <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, like, it's been, it's been a mix, like, of ways of helping each other out and seeing movies. Like, there have been movies on, like, that I think a couple of my movies, my top 20 for sure, were ones that I would never have heard of if you did not, like, do the work and find them yourself first and tell me about them. Like, yeah, we we really did have each other's back throughout this entire thing. And and really looking to see what was out there. And, and of course we got more selective as time went on because you, you do that, you slow down, you get tired. Um, but yeah, this was a really awesome year. I'm glad that we've hit 24 episodes for our podcast. Yeah. Um, thank you to everyone who's helped promote us. So Phil Ray, uh, Dave C, Craig Mark Wooten. Nato, Craig Wooten, um, as well as Darren from Psychosemantic Set podcast did i say it right psycho semantic yep yep podcast um thank you so much uh to Bo and to jerry herring from kill the cast for hosting us uh, and anybody who's who's sh shared about our podcast or commented on our page or encouraged yep. Tim everybody davis and Tim davis um i don't mean to forget people i feel like i'm an academy award in the music yeah. start playing. pretty stuff, much anybody just... we guessed it on has like promoted us in one way or another so you know dan yes. stacy uh yes mr venom mike merriman yes and, uh yes. lance langford from the horror returns and brian stitcher always sharing our posts yes you know like this is and will always be a hobby for scott and i and we'll do it till whatever point we feel like it makes sense but you all make it a lot of fun and we really appreciate that you listen and that you have a good time. You know, this is about having fun. Horror movies are about having fun and having a good time. Was there anything you wanted to add before I send our last little thank you out to a special little man? Uh, just, um, I'm excited to uh, do our next episode because our next episode, it will be our technically our one year anniversary episode. I uh, don't know what our plans will be for it yet. Like might be something special, may just be another episode, but like, I just want to say thank you to everybody that has been on this journey with us and you have seen like or heard us going on about all of our what we've been watching and like the fact that you all love our suggestions and recommendations just kind of encourages us to continue doing that and it just makes it a lot of fun. So thank you all for listening. Yes, thank you so much. And for our one year anniversary, much like any anniversaries, we will do nothing special except hold a podcast. Scott's the one that cares about anniversaries. Not Maybe me. we'll have a candlelight dinner on Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> Throw up in my mouth. Look, Scott, you need to go to one of your other many other ladies for that, okay? That's <laughs> that's Heather... not how this goes here. Be doing shots of the kill eating chicken wings. That's what would happening. But Heather, you're my you're my true love with the podcast. Oh my God, no, stop it. Stop it. I'm going to punch I'll... you in the nose so you stop. <laughs> I'm going to buy you an anniversary gift and a birthday Don't... cake for the podcast. Don't you dare. That... <laughs> oh, wait, cake. Hold up. <laughs> cake. Wait a minute. You're like, that's different. That's sweet. So as Scott <laughs> alluded to at the beginning of the podcast, um, we do have a new intro song. So I have a nephew. His name is Liam. And he is from Ontario, Canada. And he has a, uh, a YouTube channel. And I have subscribed to his YouTube channel a long, long time ago. And he, <laughs> he, he's really funny. He makes these really funny YouTube videos. I've actually sent them to Scott. And he they comes up good. with some very funny stuff. And he does some animation and stuff in them. Well, anyway, he's become a little DJ. And there was, he sent me a video and he had asked me if I had listened to it. And I said, no. And then I went back and listened to it. And I was like, man, these electronic beats are really good. And yeah. I, and I, sent, <laughs> I sent them to Scott and I didn't tell him that it was from my nephew who's 11. And <laughs> he's like, wow, this is some really good beats. I'm like, well, yeah. And he knows who Liam is. And I said, oh, it's from Liam. He's, he's 11. And Scott was like, man, I said, you know, so I, I said, you know, it'd be cool if we got him to do an intro for us. 
Um, and he could do that. So anyway, Liam made an intro for us. So that is our new intro. And I told him I would shout out his YouTube channel, which is Phantom X. Um, Scott will include it in the show notes if you would like to follow him. Um, he has some sick beats that he's come out with and he does some really good animation and he does actual animation. Like he'll, he has one video that he had so many hits on where it's him with an animated cat. Like, he, I don't think I've seen that one. No, I don't think I've, I've shared it with you. I'll have to, cause I'll have to share the channel with you so you can subscribe as well. Um, I was like, I think yeah. I've subscribed after I got, uh, when I shared the show notes last time I subscribed to Did the channel. Did you? Okay. So yeah, you have to go back and see, cause he has so many videos and he's really clever. It's really, really clever. So thank you, Liam, so much for doing our intro music. If you guys like what you hear and you want to hear the rest of his music, you can go to his YouTube channel as well as you can see there's really funny videos that are on there. Yep. And I just want to say thank you very much, Liam. I greatly appreciate it. Uh, I want to give a shout out to the name of the song too, which is called The Dark Glitch. The Dark Glitch. Isn't that clever? Yeah, that was a very good, and I just love the beats to it because it's just kind of foreboding and kind of creepy. And yeah, I just love it. And I'm going to like put the entire song at the end of this episode so everybody can hear the whole thing in its entirety. Awesome. And make sure that you support Liam. He's uh, he's going to be a famous DJ one day. And you're all going to know that you heard him here first on the Friday Nightmares podcast. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you everyone again to listening. We will be back in 2021. Brand new year. Same old Scott and Heather. <laughs> we are so sorry. <laughs> um, then we'll see where these adventures will take us. I, uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what 2020 movies wise has in store for us. So I'm excited. Any last words, Scotty, before we peace out? Uh, yeah, just uh, I hope you all, by the time you hear this, it'll be after New Year's, but I hope you all had a wonderful New Year's Eve. We're able to at least spend it with your loved ones in one way or another and had some fun, had some good drinks because, you know, we're all about the drinking on this show. And we absolutely are. If there's anything this show likes to do, it's yeah, drink. This- this this show is getting drunk way before its age. <laughs> so true. So true. Well, until then, what is it that you like to say, Scotty, to close us out? Until next time, unpleasant dreams. Bye, everyone.